Okay, good afternoon, every, good evening everybody. Uh, this is the Wednesday, January 22nd, 2020 regular meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. Uh, I call this meeting to order. And before we begin, we will do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three is roll call. Councilor Clucci. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Gleistein. Here. Councilor Katarina. Here. Councilor Johnson. Here. Uh, Councilor Hamill. Sorry, I lost my place. Here. And Chairman Johnson. I'm here. It's been a long day. <laughs> Item number four is general public comments for items that are not on the agenda. So is there anybody that would like to speak to anything that is not on the agenda? No? Okay. Item number five is approval of the minutes of the January 8th, 2020 regular town council meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Item number six is adjustment to agenda. Councilor Hamill. I'd like to make a motion that we move order number 20-007, the first reading and public hearing for the matter of the WEX CEA. Uh, to the to the top of the agenda. Uh, now there is a question about whether that should precede the public hearing uh, and action on a food handler's license. So I'm open to suggestion. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion. I would I would suggest let's do the food handler license. Get it out of the way in case they're in the audience, and then we'll do. So with that, all those in favor? Okay. Um, Item number seven, treasurer's warrants. I have signed those before the meeting. Order number 20005, a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on a new request for a food handler's license from Tiffany McKenna, DBA, the Great East Butcher Company, located on 450 Payne Road. This is a change in ownership. Thank you. This is a change in ownership. Everything is in order. Uh, once they receive their certificate of occupancy, we'll issue their food handler's license. It's recommended that it be approved. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? I'll say I love, those, I love their sandwiches. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, with that, all those in favor? Okay, uh, order number 2000, excuse me, 2007, first reading and schedule a public hearing for Wednesday, February 5th, 2020 at 7 p.m. regarding the authorization of a credit enhancement agreement for WEX and the authorization of the, and delegation to the town manager to execute such agreement in substantially the form as presented by town council. So with that, are there any members of the public that would like to speak to this item? And if you are going to speak, if you would line up, it will help with our timing, so we'd appreciate it. Well, thank you. Uh, Liam Summers, uh, uh, Holmes Road. Uh, just wanted to touch on the, on the CEA, but less about WEX, because I think WEX is an awesome build, uh, business. I'm excited they're coming to Scarborough. I think it will be a, a great addition uh, to the town. I think that there has been some confusion about the process. Um, I think the press releases in advance of the notification of uh, potential CEA has caused a lot of confusion, and obviously you'll address that and rectify that. Uh, but th they'll be a great business, and, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see them in 2022. Uh, I think the, the general questions I have, because I've already written the council about some of that as well, general questions I have uh, are in regard to how we are applying um, fairness in the CEA process overall. What are the criteria for... Uh, obtaining a CEA. Uh, we see that the, the Downs are getting a considerable amount of that, uh, that love these days. But I, I guess the question I would have is, if you're a business looking at Scarborough, is the expectation to come into town that you would get a CEA now? Um, because if I were a business coming to Scarborough, that's what I would expect. Um, and I don't know what the criteria is. Maybe that is something that you can uh, illuminate for us, but there are businesses that have recently opened in Scarborough. I don't think they were the beneficiary of a, of a CEA. Um, and so I'm wondering how that works in a not picking winners kind of a way so that businesses can come into this town and feel like they can fairly compete 
um, on a level playing field. And then from uh, a resident standpoint, what that means to us in terms of uh, you know, tax advantages to the town. If you look at the, the way the CEA is structured for uh, WEX in particular, it looks like about 24% of the revenue goes to town, about 37% goes to the downs um, from their CEA, and then the rest is for services um, over the 15 years, if I'm reading that correctly, and I'm just doing napkin math. But um, trying to figure out, understand better, uh, as, as businesses want to come to Scarborough, and hopefully they do continue to want to come to Scarborough, um, how we are applying the criteria for, uh, you know, getting some tax incentives and, and what is a town we feel is reasonable. Thank you. Thanks, sir. I'm Susan Hamill, um, Bay Street and Pine Point. I'm here tonight uh, to speak in favor of the, WEC, of the CEA for WEX. Like any complex issue, there are many pros and cons, but I've thought a lot about it and decided that for this town and for this time, it makes good sense. And here's why. First, I think politics is compromise. That's just a reality. In a perfect world, we wouldn't be giving a CEA to WEX. And all the lots on Haggis Parkway would be filled up with tax-paying commercial entities and, instead of sitting empty for the last 20 years. But this is the world we live in, one where providing tax breaks to businesses moving to town is routine. In fact, I commend the town and the team who worked out the details for the CEA. It's peanuts. It's only $150,000 a year for 15 years. That's not to say I don't value every single penny of tax revenue that comes to this town. But compared to our total town budget, which is approaching $100 million, this is nothing. And I see it as a small price to pay to get a first class project like this in Scarborough. Second. The project will have so many follow-on benefits for the town. The Downs will need to move quickly to develop its main street and bring all the retail commercial projects to the area. We've already talked tonight about the daycare, daycares, restaurants, dry cleaners, brew pubs, and so much more. Without WEX, the commercial base developing in the, in the Innovation District would slowly fill up, as it has been, with small entities. And I'm not knocking these tenants and businesses, but WEX coming here sets a different tone for what, what else might come in the future. The appeal of Haggis Parkway will also increase, and commercial projects will finally fill in there. And last, the Community Center Athletic Complex. It will be built. We don't know if it'll be private or public, but without a doubt, it will be built and it will be available for Scarborough residents. <coughs> and it will be built sooner rather than later. Last, I just want to address a couple of criticisms I've heard about the CEA. First is the traffic on Route 1 and Oak Hill. This project has easy access from the Turnpike, 295 and Payne Road. And it shouldn't have such a huge impact on Route 1 that some have predicted. And secondly, uh, some have said it sets a bad precedent. Now every business coming in will ask for a CEA. I don't agree with this. This is a small $150,000 a year CEA on a $50 million project. So how much do you think another project of maybe five or $10 million might get from the town? My guess is a lot less than this because this is first and it's a big project and it will be a big draw for all the other entities. I predict that the town will be in a much better position to say no in the future. Last thing, I just want to say thank you. Thanks to, all, to WEX and to all the players in this project for making it happen and pushing the dial on one of the long-standing goals of this town, which was increasing the commercial tax base of the town. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Hamill. Hey, uh, Matt Scyther, 14 Huntley Drive. Um, I'm also here to speak in favor of the WEX CEA. Um, I know CEA has kind of become a dirty word in Scarborough, um, and that's fair, honestly. Um, but I think it's important to judge each one on its own merits, and I think this one is, is all upside. Um, 
I mean, if the if the numbers are right, the cost est the estimated cost to serve and the projected valuation are right, then it's three million in surplus over 15 years. Um, so that that's pretty much a, a sure thing. There, that's that's very high likelihood. There's very low risk associated with that. Um, so I'd encourage all the counselors to do just small mathematical exercise and think about how much value would need to be created organically in that space if you didn't do a, a CEA um, to achieve $3 million in surplus over 15 years. Um, my estimates, and again, don't take my word for it, do the math yourself. I think it amounts to around 30 million. Um, if you look at some of the other huge uh, high value commercial space in Scarborough, 30 million is a stretch. Um, that would be tough to achieve without any kind of significant tax incentive. Um, so passing on this, I think, is actually a pretty big gamble because we don't know what's going to go in there. Um, taking this is, in my opinion, the safe bet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scheider. Good evening, uh, Dave Dittmer, 11 Woodside Drive in Scarborough. I'm also a uh, co-owner of a small business, Focal Point Physical Therapy, located in Scarborough. I've lived in Scarborough 14 years. I have, uh, my business has been located here for 12. Um, I'm here to speak in favor of the uh, CEA. Uh, the last, last year, I spent a lot of time studying the Downs, going to the meetings with the Downs. And the CEA was part of that. It was, it was explained that we would be able to draw businesses in. They would be looking for credit enhancements themselves. Every town, as was explained during the meeting, Westbrook, South Portland, they all have credit, some sort of credit enhancement or tax break or some sort of competitive edge. This was our chance to get a competitive edge, and it seems to be working. As a business owner, I would not expect to get a credit enhancement if I moved to a new facility. As any small business owner would, would not seek that. A large business owner, a very large business owner, it would be all expectation. It would be not doing their due diligence if they didn't ask for it, especially for a public, publicly traded company. We have the opportunity here to jumpstart the Downs because of the work that the Downs has done and where the downtown district was looking like it was going to be seven years off, now it can be <coughs> pared down even more to two or three years. The community center that everyone's been talking about, there's a chance there, and engaging WEX as a corporate citizen should be our main goal right now. As a citizen of Scarborough, I do a lot of things with my kids and with the rec and with different community organizations. WEX is a very large company with a lot of Scarborough residents and it can make a very big impact not just on the physical size and the traffic and everything else, but how it impacts how we work within the community to have a key player that can say, yes, we could have WEX right next to a community center, engaging them in that and saying, how can we help each other? I think that the CEA is, is the first step in that. And I think it's going to be a long process to really synergize WEX, its full community, and the Scarborough community. But I think it's going to be an important step to take and one that we should all support and move forward with. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dimmer. Hi, my name is Michael Sawyer. I live down on Four Trapu Terrace here in Scarborough. I've been uh, living here all my life. A uh, couple of things I want to talk about is consolidating the three smaller schools. I think that's a great idea. I think that should go ahead. I think it should have been done 20 years ago. Um, it will save us a lot of money in the long run, I think. Uh, second thing I want to talk about, Scabber Downs Project. Now, years ago, uh, they did a project down uh, Juneberry Place, I think they call it, down at the end of my road, right across from the park. Well, they clear cut everything on both sides of the brook. When you do that, what do you think happens? Number one thing happens, you heat up the water 15 degrees. 
All right, that's bad enough. You just killed everything in that brook. Killed everything. Brook I've been fishing in since I was a little boy is gone. Used to be three to four feet of water in there. Now you're lucky during the summertime to have six inches to a foot. You can't do anything with that brook now. Now, uh, a couple months ago, they were, um, when they started this Scabber Down project, they must have been having water, people uh, from the University of Maine or wherever come by and was asking questions about the water and stuff like that. And I told them what happened down there, that they not only clear cut on both sides, that brook used to be so crooked, every five feet, there was a choom, choom, choom. Well, that clogged up the brook with debris, and there was dams that kept the brook at a certain level. Well, they not only, when they cleaned up their mess, took all the debris out, they made it like an arrow, straight as an arrow. <laughs> there is no more curves in there. So the, even if debris falls in there, it just gets washed out. Now, we can get a little bit of that back. We might be able to get it all back. Dam, dam, dam up. Route one up here. Put a dam that we can control the level. And put another one down by my house on Sawyer Road. And that will higher the level and keep it where it's supposed to be, where it always was. And we might be able to have fish back in that. And we never had fish from the other side of the road, I live on the side, on the left side if you're going down from Route 1. On the right side, all the way down to Route 1, where they just put all that drainage, all that. Um, so everything's going to flow down on that back side. Now there's more water there now than there is on the other side of the brook where there was three feet of water. And the, the guy I was talking to said, D you might be able to put fish in there, but it still needs to be higher, just a little more. But uh, who was paying attention? Who in the town is supposed to protect us from people cutting next to a brook? I see they're doing the same thing. Actually, that name of the brook is Mill Brook. And it goes up where they click cutting up on Sawyer Road now. There's a bunch of, uh, they already clear cut, now there's a bunch of heavy equipment in there now cutting more. There's a cranberry bog there. Are they cutting into that cranberry bog? I thought that's protected. Who is supposed to protect us? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Leanne Casalonis, 11 Orchard Street. Um, I do have a lot because there's a lot of numbers in here. But first, I'd like to thank you for holding this workshop tonight and for working to bring a deal that would bring Wex to Scarborough. I'm in a unique position, not only as a resident of our town, an elected school board member, but also a 20-year employee of Wex. I've seen my company be publicly traded, merge with like businesses in the U.S., expand internationally, and now hopefully move our operations to Scarborough. My coworkers and I were eagerly waiting to hear which of the locations rumored to be our new home would come out on top, and I was so excited to see it with the Downs. This only emphasizes what I already know to be true. Scarborough was an amazing place to call home. I've also heard and seen plenty of the negative feedback about council offering this credit enhancement agreement to bring this business to Scarborough. Are we giving back tax dollars to a corporation? We are, but I also recognize basis point rebates are a cost of doing business today. And I ask those who are speaking the loudest, do you apply each year for your homestead exemption? Just a reminder, that is a tax credit granted to us as homeowners. It is important to mention that the valuation of the new X building and their tax bill will be higher than the entirety of the businesses in Oak Hill, not including the Hannaford Plaza, and second only to Piper Shores in estimated value. How many businesses or new homes would council need to add to generate that same $227,000 annual tax revenue? If I use my extremely modest homes tax bill, I estimate that would require 60 new homes to meet the same target tax collection each year. And in those homes, how many children will be attending our schools, how much trash is picked up each week, or how many emergency calls will be made? Landing <coughs> Lex is not just a good deal, 
but a great deal for this town. There are so many things I can share about WAX, but I'm only going to highlight a couple. We are philanthropic, and I'm hopeful that the current relationship we have with the South Portland schools will grow to include the Scarborough public school system, from our liter literacy projects, to internships, to mentoring opportunities for our students. It is an incredible opportunity for any rising student in Scarborough to have an international company in their backyard to, enjoy, to inspire to, in, to join, even more so for female students as they see the strong women who are leading this Fortune 500 company. As a presenting sponsor for the Try for a Cure, Wexfield is a large team of employees who compete in the event and just last year raised over $30,000. These athletes train hard and now may have an opportunity to walk across the street to get their pool laps done before hitting the open water or head over to Foley's Fitness for the treadmills and bikes to gain saddle time in inclement weather. We are solid corporate citizens. We use our volunteer days to sponsor the, com the <clears throat> communities that we're working in, and I believe that's going to translate into various projects within our 54 square miles. We entertain our clients, partners, and visiting coworkers when they come to town, and so many great established places that we can already envision introducing them to. We go out for lunch, we celebrate team wins, and the residual income that 1,200 Wexers will generate isn't accounted for in the numbers I've seen so far, but convince their businesses that do not yet know that they're going to be joining Wex here in the Scarborough Downs. More importantly, when our tax assessment was completed this fall, Council promised us that the share of burden would be lessened by bringing new industry to Scarborough, and you're doing exactly that. Currently, Scarborough homeowners shoulder 77% of the revenue raised through our property tax bills. The ideal rate for municipal revenue raised through property taxes, according to the Urban Institute, is 47%, while the Tax Policy Center target is 30%. Again, we're paying 77% of the revenue in this town. The only way to begin bridging this 30 to 47 point gap is closing in on deals such as the one that's in front of us today. As an added bonus, Businesses historically have a low cost of service in any town, so this will also create a more positive revenue stream for Scarborough than filling the same footprint with residential units. <clears throat> Finally, as a school board member, we are voting tomorrow on our building steering committee's recommendation regarding how best to address the size and age of our primary school buildings. We have been following the news for our neighboring towns and recognize our request is going to be a significant financial ask of our community. The ability for Scarborough to raise additional revenues via welcoming new businesses and not solely on increases to our mill rate will make that, far, that final number far more palatable to our voters when we seek referendum approval. As a town, we have not fully developed our existing business parks to their full capacity for various reasons. Please do not repeat that same pattern we've been following and pushing out businesses, businesses which pay taxes from wanting to call Scarborough home. The genie has already left the bottle of the Downs project and the development is going to happen. This is our opportunity to ensure the right mixture of development occurs. Please promote this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Casanonis. Good evening, Art Dillon, Black Point Road. Um, personally, I'm totally in favor of the CA uh, for WAX. Uh, I think it's a win-win. I won't go into all the details. Everyone else has already gone in. Um, for those that don't know, I'm the immediate past president of the Scarborough Chamber of Commerce. This is on our agenda for our Monday board meeting, and not to put the cart before the horse, but I anticipate a letter of support from our organization for this as well. Um, so I hope to be, be here again saying that for sure, if not sending a letter of support for this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Rick Cheney. Um, I live at Nine Hampton Circle. Um, I won't reiterate um, the good information that you've been provided tonight by Karen Martin and Ben Devine um, and Ms. Hamill's, I think, points were very well taken. Um, I want to touch a little bit on a little bit of history. I've been a citizen of this town for 25 plus years. I've been on the planning board. I sit on the Long Range Planning Committee. I co-chair the prior Comprehensive Plan Committee. I'm currently working on the Long Range Plan, um, Planning Committee on the current comp plan. I chair the Land Trust. I have been involved in a lot of things in this town, and I've seen a lot of things happen, and I've seen a lot of changes. But the one constant that I heard time and time again 
in all the bodies that I've served on is what do we do to see the vision for Highgast Parkway come to reality? And what do we do to try to see something happen at the Scarborough Downs that will hopefully develop the town center concept that many of us have worked on through the zoning that we've developed over the years. Um, I remember when Bank North wanted to come to Scarborough, they wanted to site a massive facility where Cabela's is located now. They didn't come because the council refused, as I understand it, to foot the bill or at least participate in footing the bill for public sewer that would have served that facility. Bank North didn't come to Scarborough. Fortunately, the Cabela's project, which I had the pleasure of representing the developer on, did. But I don't think it had the same impact on the development of Higus Parkway that the Bank North facility would have had. Now, granted, we had 2008, which killed a lot of development on Higus Parkway. But we're through that now. And finally, with the commitment of the Risberas and the Mishus, we have a development, development group that is moving ahead finally with Scarborough Downs, which I think will be a fantastic long-range project for the town. It's undoubtedly going to kickstart more development on Highgast Parkway. And um, most importantly, the WEX project will be a huge, perhaps a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the town of Scarborough to get a world-class uh, office facility in this town for what, as Ms. Hamill said, is a very modest contribution from the town. So I strongly support the council's um, voting in favor of participating in this project through the credit enhancement agreement, and I hope all of you will, will see it the way I see it and vote um, to see this become a reality. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Anybody else? Everybody's still in my thunder, but I do want to reiterate a couple things. <laughs> Dave Merrill, 29 J. McCo Mill Road. Um, I've been a resident here for near 20 years as well and participated in a lot of the uh, long-range planning and comprehensive plan uh, studies and organization over those years. Uh, and one of the biggest things that we've tried to promote over those years is increasing our commercial industrial uh, per, uh, percentage of development as opposed to our residential. Um, we are in the fortunate position of, of having uh, Scarborough Downs, which presented us with a, a wonderful opportunity to increase that percentage. Um, so I, I would, that's one strong point in favor of uh, my support and your consideration for this uh, particular credit enhancement agreement. Um, it will do wonders for our what is probably 25 or 26 percent uh, commercial industrial valuation right now increased and would we, we've always wanted to shoot towards 30 so um, one point second point is um, again reiterator reiterating on history uh, since I've been here there have been several proposals for Scarborough Downs um, many of them uh, were centered around gambling mm -hmm. uh, and with out-of-town developers um, now we have an opportunity with local developers uh, no gambling uh, commercial industrial, which is going to boost our valuation, and uh, a perfect live-work community, which I think are, you know, we've also got to consider the secondary and tertiary benefits of this project, uh, not just the straight tax dollars, but all the development that's going to happen around it, uh, incremental changes that will happen over time that will help boost this town. Uh, I know we don't like lots of growth, but at least we're trying to control it and uh, I think with this and the, the vision and the foresight and the efforts that have been put in to date, I strongly hope to consider this and, and move it forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any others? I'll be brief. I had no idea this was on the agenda. Um, <laughs> I started at WEX in 1989 in a little brick building underneath the railroad trestle. Could you just state your name, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Terry Kane, 49 Gunstock Road. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a little brick building right under the railroad trestle over by Hadlock Field. <laughs> and what I was impressed with when I started there was the integrity in this little tiny outfit that was 
had no idea what it wanted to be. And as the company has grown, like and there were 32 people the day I got there. They're like five or 6,000 around the world now. Never was there a moment when integrity wasn't first. Um, the, the longtime president of our company, Mike Dubiak, and the current uh, CEO, Melissa Smith, who's just awesome, they, every, everything is integrity first. You know, does it work out every moment for every employee in the building? No, it doesn't do that anywhere. But when you walk out of there, it's awful easy to be proud of where you work. And I, I, wait till you get a load of it. It's going to be great. <laughs> Any others? Okay, with that, I will close public comment. And do I have a motion? So moved. Second. And discussion. Councilor Caterina. I'll start. Um, I think it was great to hear from a number of people in town, and I they stole all my thunder, too, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I'm familiar uh, with Wex. I knew Mike Dubiak years ago, but that's another story. Anyway, it was a good one. Um, and I, I agree. I remember when it was Wright Express in the little brick building under the trussell tracks there uh st john street or st john street um and they do have a great corporate culture uh that being said uh they are a fortune 500 company i think to land them in scarborough for them to choose to come to this town is huge um not only for uh the, the type of company that they are but to serve as an anchor for the development of Scarborough Downs. They are the type of development that we want and need in Scarborough. I've lived in Scarborough since 1988. I remember when TD Bank uh, was given the cold shoulder. Uh, look what happened. August Parkway is still sitting empty. Uh, well, not so much now. It's starting to fill up finally, but it's taken a long time. Um, I will be um, pretty disturbed if we do not uh, follow through and accept the CEA. There's, I see nothing but upside to this. So uh, that's where I stand. Anybody else? Councilor Clucci? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think this is a huge win for Scarborough and for the Downs team and, and, and Divine Capital and everybody who's involved in it, and for Wex as well. I mean, we are handicapped in Scarborough in that we don't have access to some of the same programs that other towns have, um, subsidies from the state and federal government, um, funds from the state and federal government. So to win or pull off something like this is a real testament to um, Scarborough's character and the quality of uh, what we offer in town, of, of our people, our amenities, and whatnot. So I, I, I really am excited to welcome WEX uh, to Scarborough and uh, look forward to them being engaged with our community, as I fully expect that they will. Um, it, I, I want to kind of give a little bit, I've had a long time to process this now. I, I, I think I first heard about uh, uh, Wex possibly coming to town back in July, and uh, I started skeptical. So I, uh, I can understand uh, why some people, this is just being put in front of them, why they have some questions. And, uh, it, you know, my initial thoughts were, wow, boy, that's bigger than I thought. Uh, what would happen in the downs and it wasn't exactly kind of how I had perceived the development happening there but as I've had time to process and study it and analyze it um, I'm now in, in a, a, the mindset of wow uh, this is uh, better than anything that I could have possibly envisioned uh, six months ago so uh, thanks. Any others? No? No. Oh. Oh. Mr. Peter? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll echo everything said. I'm really excited about the announcement, really excited about what's coming. Tremendously respect them as a corporate entity in our state and their commitment to being in the state, and they've got some wonderful programming for their employees and others. So they're a great corporate citizen. So having said that, I'll echo everything. I'm excited about the announcement. Um, where I sit right now, similar to Kasekuchi, to, to, where we talked about, you know, we've, we've had a little more time to look at this. I still have some concerns about the CE, and it kind of lines up in a couple of ways. One is 
certainly what we've heard about transparency and sort of conversations, but we've started that process tonight, which I'm, I'm really glad for. We've, it's a great turnout. Hopefully people will, will get the information and make their own decisions about where they are. Um, so that's great. The second piece that I have some concerns about is really, I, I think, mentioned by a couple of the speakers. And I don't think we as yet as a council have really come to terms with this. And that is just, you know, this is, are we going to, what are we going to do as CEAs for other businesses that come to town that want to come here? What's our policy? What's our procedure? What's going to be our criteria? I don't think we've really done that yet. I think it's important work that we do need to do. I think it's an important question we need to answer about, you know, if another large entity earlier tonight, I mean, I spent a lot of, big part of my career at Hannaford Supermarkets, if Hannaford announced that they wanted to put a corporate office over in Scarborough Downs, what would we do? So I just think we have some work to do about where it makes sense, where it doesn't make sense. So I, I do have some concerns that we don't have that done. Um, I also have concerns around the financial model, and I just want to get really comfortable with the numbers. Um, you know, certainly I used to do this type of work in, in, at, at Hannaford Supermarkets and was there about doing acquisitions and deciding where to put growth, and we had a 10-year cash flow projection we had to do. And, you know, numbers can be complex. Numbers can be really complex over 30 years. And so when I look at the modeling we've done for all the other sort of TIFs and CEAs we've done, our projections and modeling of where we were have turned out to be overly optimistic. All of, we are upside down from where we thought we we're going to be in all of these investments. And I look at when we talk about the huge investment we've already committed to, which is 80 plus million over, you know, 30 years, I need to get a little bit more comfortable with the numbers. So that's, that's just where I am. What I am glad about, at this point in time, I'm, I'm sort of undecided. I really look forward to, I want to understand the numbers a little better. And what I'm really looking forward to is hearing from everybody out there about what they think. I, tonight was very helpful. We, we've had some different viewpoints. But I really want to hear from the community, because this is going to be a community conversation. It's going to, it's going to really help decide the pathway for us. So please, I, I'm sure other council members would also really would love to hear whatever your viewpoints are, so that we can try to make the decision that is really reflects what the community wants to have happen. So I guess that's where I am. I will certainly support this tonight, the first read. I look forward to the public hearing and, and further dialogue. So thank you. Sure. Councilor Gleisen. Uh, yes, I came in with some questions tonight, um, and I've had some of them answered and some of them not answered. Um, one of my questions was, um, is the CEA required to get WEX here? Um, while we didn't hear from WEX themselves, um, I take Mr. Devine at his word that it is required. Um, the second question, um, and this one comes from a lot of residents as well, is um, we've heard that WEX is a good deal, but WEX is a good deal compared to what? Question mark. Um, Mr. Scyther did, uh, with his analytical mind, um, looked at this, but this is where, along with Peter, I feel that um, I've not seen the numbers on what else this would look like um, with different development, other development, less development, slower development. Um, and so um, I don't feel like I have that big picture yet. Um, the next thing that uh, I came to ask and find out that I don't quite feel I have an answer to yet that I've heard from a lot of residents is um, what else can be done for the people of Scarborough? Um, have we made the best deal? Um, you know, clearly the developers want to make that deal, which is awesome. Um, they want to put an investment in Scarborough. It's going to be great to have WEX here. I welcome WEX. Um, but you mentioned you're holding land for WEX. Will you hold land for a consolidated school for us? Will you give us a discount for the school property? Um, will, if, assuming we don't have a, the community center go forward the way it's proposed and it's a private entity, will you give Scarborough residents a discount to be members at EDGE? Um, could we talk about getting more transparency on what you might spend on roads outside um, and what you're spending on infrastructure. Um, we know you're going to spend a lot of money on that two-mile circle. Can we get a commitment on that? Um, so I'm just wondering if there's more things that we could talk about, more things that would make the people of Scarborough say, 
this is the way to go. Um, this is a long process we have in front of us, but I'm hoping that everyone can um, consider that. Um, and then, um, you know, we've, uh, one of the things I feel like, number four, that we haven't considered um, is that, you know, uh, if, if this all works out, we'll probably draw a lot more residents and students because um, WEX employees are gonna have kids, they're gonna wanna <coughs> live here, um, and uh, that's awesome. But the number one thing I heard um, when I was running for office, and I'm one of the most recently elected officials up here, um, is that people want to slow down the residential growth. They want to slow it down. They, they do want to balance the commercial, which the WEX accomplishes, so that gets me to that part. Um, but the, the growth is not inevitable. Um, we as the town council, we have the ability and the authority to control residential growth. It's happened before in this town. Um, it can happen again. And so, you know, I personally would love to see this council before committing to this deal look at growth. We don't know um, how much more growth this is gonna bring to town, but what is that mix? So I would ask that we would look at that mix again. So um, I, I'm very excited to hear all the comments tonight. I definitely wanna hear from people. Um, I have an open mind. I uh, appreciate everything that's been brought forward. Um, and those are the questions I came with. One, one has been answered, I still have others. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Johnson? Yeah, I'm a simple guy, and I look at this as a good deal for the town of Scarborough. I think WEX is the stellar company to be coming into the town, and I'm looking at this from a growth perspective. I think, as Casaloni mentioned, it would be 50 to 60 new residential homes to equal the tax value aside from the down CEA and the CEA to WEX. 50 to 60 new homes brings probably stress into the school system. So I think for one building, the tax benefit we're getting from the town actually answers some of our growth. I also think, Ms. Casaloni mentioned that the tax burden is 77% on the homeowners, 23% on the commercial. I really think the WEX will be the catalyst to shift that paradigm. Hopefully maybe we can get to a 60-40. If we can get to a 60-40, tax base in, the, in this town, we're actually going to be sitting pretty good. So I do support this effort. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hamill? Yes, I'd like to speak in favor of this. Uh, I think most of the point, points high and low have been made. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's a really good start um, this evening, uh, playing catch up, you know, after a slow start in terms of us being public with this. But I, you know, I, I do want to remind people that um, there were some structural aspects to this that we didn't control. You know, uh, it was actually a fairly complicated deal. There were several entities, and we really didn't get face-to-face -face with uh, the partner, potentially, in the CEA until very late in the process. So, so I want to reassure people that we you know, are doing what we can with what we know, with what we're able to, to share, you know, as soon as we can. And, and I, I know that we've got a lot more to talk about. Um, at the same time, I think we, you know, it's not a perfect world. It's never going to be, we can do all kinds of modeling and we're never going to know the answers to all the questions that have been raised, you know, just in the past few minutes. We're, you know, we may never know them in our lifetime, forget about, know them about this deal. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to be, uh, you know, uh, steady in our assessment of this opportunity. We need to be objective. We need to be reasonable and not be, you know, asking for a bunch of other things that, um, you know, may not be realistic or practical for you know, for this deal or any other deal. And I think we, you know, this strategically puts us, I think, uh, where we should be going. And it's a tremendous next step that could advance us much faster than this might otherwise develop. And, and that's actually good for us. So, you know, I, and I know there's a lot of frustration with, well, you know, we made a deal with the Downs and then why we have other, other people with their hands out. And, you know, the fact of the matter is there will be, there will continue to be different developers and different parties that are that are going to be playing some role in the future expansion of the downs. So um, I think that's just something we need to get our heads around and to try to be as constructive and practical in our approach and supportive, and and also at the same time ensuring that we are looking out for the best interests of everyone in the town. And I, I feel very confident that we can do that. 
Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, I know it's come up about um, CEA policies. I know in uh, the rules for whatever. Fin it's in finance right now, too. Yeah, yeah. so we, we sent it back to finance. So there is, a, there is a policy coming out on that. So we are working on that. It has come up. Uh, I know I hear this from, from not only from uh, Councillor Gleistein, but I've heard it from some people too. It's like, oh, so all these people are going to, you know, move to town with kids and, you know, they're going to build all these houses. That's one s set of growth is residential building. But don't forget, we have, um, and for those who don't know or haven't heard, I'm a real estate broker myself. I deal in residential real estate. And right now in Scarborough, we're starting to get a turnover in inventory, not as much as we should have. That's why prices are so darn high. Um, but people are aging out of their houses. And it's got nothing to do with taxes. It's got whatever. And guess who's buying them? People with families. So even if you said we aren't going to build any more new houses in town, we're just going to put a moratorium, we're never building any new houses, you could say that all day long, but it's no guarantee that you're not going to have families moving in with kids. So I see that as somewhat of a red herring being thrown out there. Um, and I would go back to both Ms. Casalonis and Ms. Hamill's statements. Uh, regarding um, the impact on taxes. As a town councilor, I see my primary job is trying to maintain tax stability for the people of this town. I pay taxes too, don't forget. All of us sitting here pay taxes. Uh, and the best way to maintain tax stability, and we're the envy of many, many municipalities in the state, is having a good, strong, varied, commercial base and that is what we're doing at the Downs and this is why WEX is going to be an anchor for that and they are exactly the type of business that we need to bring in for tax stability in this town. So again, I just wanted to address those. Councilor Gleisey. Uh, yes, seems like a couple of the comments were addressed at me. Um, so yeah, the other things I've been hearing from folks are um, you know, tax stability uh, is is a good goal. 60% um, of the town got hit with a huge increase in their tax bill with the reval. Um, so that's the bottom line for some of the sensitivity that people have around um, a corporation that when the, um, the press releases came out, talked a lot about how they're making, how there's a wine bar on a roof. I mean, I, I'm just, you know, it's it's a challenging thing. It may or may not be the right thing to do. I'm still looking at everything. Um, but I think, you know, you have to understand the sensitivity around people who are not able to actually go pick up their medicine. And we're talking about um, a tax reduction. Uh, under certain circumstances. So again, it may or may not be the right thing to do, um, but uh, that's some of the other comments that have been issued at me. Any more? Thank you. So the way I look at it, we've, we already have two wins. Um, Councilor Katarina agreed with Ms. Hamill, so that's <laughs> win number that's one. <laughs> Win number two, uh, the marijuana guys have to sit through things they don't care about, why other people. Uh, so, so it's a win. Uh, no, no, in all seriousness, uh, to, the, there, to re reiterate what Councillor Katarina said, we do have a CEA policy that's actually been in the works for about a year. Um, it's not perfect. It's gone back and forth within committees three times. And because I think we really need to get this right. Um, and so, I encourage anybody that is currently at the finance committee level, and it will be brought to the council, I'm going to say relatively soon. So I encourage anybody who is concerned, um, Mr. Summer spoke to it, it, it they're valid points. I think us um, coming up with our criteria, criteria on what meets the bar here is incredibly important moving forward. Um, and, I, and I believe one of the good features of that policy is us acknowledging as a body first that we can then... Um, and then we're going to essentially activate the process. I could be wrong, but it, it, it just signals to the public a little sooner, I believe, that this is coming. Um, you know, secondly, 
I've said this before, but there's pro I can count on my left hand how many companies I would even consider this for. Um, WEX is one of them. Um, you know, I think that this is, in, particularly in this region, this, th th there's, there's only three, four, five whales here, and WEX is one of them. Um, and that, that's why we're doing this. Um, and, you know, some people may have noticed that the council ten may have taken a fiscally conservative turn recently. Um, this, here's a great example, in my opinion, of what, how this can work in our favor. Um, th this deal that is at least being discussed, we did not, this deal is not giving away the farm. It is an incredibly conservative deal. Um, I watched the blood flow out of Ben Devine's face when I told him we weren't making um, the difference between us and South Portland. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was very real. And, you know, so when it is easy to be concerned about fiscal conservative councils, but here's a, in my opinion, if this goes through, here's a great example of how this actually works for the town in the long run. Uh, so with that, um, I'll take a vote. So all those in favor? And all those opposed? Six to one. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving right along. Actually, I'm going to pause if you want to clear out because that's why you're here. We'll pause for one second. No, you're gonna do. You're gonna do RF all by yourself. Yeah, well, it's, I was just wondering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we can with the amendments. Can yeah, we? I was gonna say just keep it separate. That was gonna be. Here, you've already seen this because I sent it an email. Yes. I guess I'll wait on this Here. until yeah. she's gonna do this first, right? Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> so it goes through, we put it, they do their hearing, they do a public hearing, then we vote, motion to pass, second, and then I move. Are you going to make any mention that you fully expect uh, an amendment to move our yeah, no, I'll just say it in plain terms that way. Just use the last to start with that week. Yeah. Most of these people have to get to that. I know. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, uh, we are now on to order number 19093, second reading on the proposed changes to chapter 405, the town of Scarborough zoning ordinance relating to marijuana establishments. Uh, and is there a motion on the floor? Actually, I guess no, public, comment. public comment. Sorry. <laughs> Anybody like public comment? No? Hello, my name is Alicia Emmerich, 3 Haystack Circle. Um, I just wanted to express once again um, my uh, dissatisfaction with having this considered in the RF zone. I did miss last, the last meeting, so I don't know if a decision has been reached as far as that goes. And I also think it would be foolhardy not to limit the number of licenses that's issued, and I don't know if a decision has been reached along those lines. Um, and I also wanted to mention that this week I was looking through um, the town websites uh, for some major uh, cities in Colorado, um, and they seem to have much more extensive um, ordinances than, than we have in place. Um, Boulder specifically actually has an online order form that uh, right on their website in the ordinance section where you can file a complaint against any grower, whether, and you can even do it anonymously, 
um, so they can investigate it and there's a box you can check if, if you do want to be contacted with the result. So there, and, and it's not limited to a property, an adjoining property owner, which is very interesting. You could just be a citizen walking down the street and if you smell it and you're on public property, you have every right to complain about it. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, do I have a motion? So moved. And before we start discussion, I believe there'll be an amendment on the floor. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Yep. Mr. Chair, I'd like to offer the following amendment. I move to adopt the proposed changes to Chapter 405 with the removal of any mention of marijuana cultivation or manufacture of marijuana products as an allowed activity in the rural farming zone. And I've handed out um, the um, our, uh, excuse me, the proposed amendment. You should have gotten it also. Um, I emailed it to everyone earlier. So that's my amendment. Second on the amendment. You need a motion. Oh, yeah, that was your yes. motion. Yep. Second. Yep. Discussion on the amendment. Yeah, I, I spent many hours along with uh, Jean Marie and also with uh, Katie Foley, you know, over the past seems like a year or so uh, on the ordinance committee working through these um, and I'm pleased to say I think this amendment is a very good illustration of how the process should work we had hearings and we had public comment and there was such a strong opposition uh, expressed about issues in the RF zone that this is a direct result of that mm -hmm. so if there's any question about the council not listening or not not paying attention to what the public is saying uh, this is a good example of where it does work and how it can work. Mm -hmm. So we're not done yet. There are other amendments, I believe, that we'll be talking about. But um, I, uh, I think it's a good example of how the process can work, given a chance and given some patience. More discussion on the amendment. No? I'll, I'll have a quick comment on it. I, I'm a little torn here. I, I've been relatively quiet through this whole process. I think the real issue is we have two different RF zones in this town and we're seeing some friction. We have RF zones in this town that are cul-de-sac neighborhood RF zones, and then we have RF zones where I live. Uh, I don't care if my neighbor grows all sorts of marijuana. Um, I am on a personal level. I have absolutely no problems with cultivation in RF zone of marijuana. However, with that being said, to me the bigger issue, there's been some discussion over an overlay district and what have you, the, the problem with RF zones in Scarborough you drive a half a mile and you're in a different character RF zone. Um, so I'm actually going to not support this simply because I think it's worth having the discussion of do we go back and visit the actual farming area of this town and the actual people that want to cultivate an agricultural product on their property, I think they should be allowed to. So I'm going to say no for the record so at least there's, there's some sort of opposition in the record. Okay, vote on the amendment. All those in favor? And all those opposed? Five to two? Okay. Are there any, are we back to the main motion, Ms. Gleisen? Are we doing your amendments on the other one? That's the Okay. That's the next one. Okay. Okay. So without discussion on the motion as amended. <laughs> This is a little awkward because I believe there was another amendment for 405, and I didn't have that one. It was to strike um, the language related to um, in a different section of 405, and we could address it in the future. But it, it was sent out. At the, Larissa has it. Larissa has it. Thank you, Larissa. You want to offer it? Sure. So this is 405, section five. Um, definitions. This um, isn't related really directly to um, marijuana, uh, the ordinances, but um, that's small batch processing facilities, which reads a category of a food processing facility or light industrial use that produce, processes, produces or assembles small lots of consumer goods. Processors in this category include but are not limited to clothing design and production, small batch food production, craft brewers, jewelry makers, and other lines that have an element of handcrafted design or handmade portion. The current ordinance says small batch processing facilities shall not include the production or processing of medical marijuana. And I am offer a motion to strike 
small batch processing facility shall not include the production of processing of medical marijuana. I'll second it just for discussion, but yeah. I guess I'm really confused. Okay. So okay. Yeah, it's for this. consistency because I think that was put in when mer medical marijuana passed, but yeah. now that we're passing a new set of ordinances, we can just remove that out of there because you're going to exclude medical marijuana from small bats processing if you leave that in there. It was gotcha. excluded because it was excluded originally because uh, I don't know why, I don't remember, but if you just to keep it consistent, we're, we don't talk about, we have marijuana ordinances now to address all kinds of things. That's why. Do we want to, I don't have a copy of this in front of me and I don't want to vote on something. So I, do we want to somehow project, I, Tom, is that it? It is. Um, so I'm we're going to pause and project this on the screen so all of us can see it. We're having the same mirror Maybe. issue. Second screen. Nope, one more time. I got one more, one more trick. I don't know. We'll give it up. <coughs> nope. We'll have to figure out when that's going to come. Sorry about that. So where we can qu quickly print that? Yes. Thank you, Larissa. What section are we talking about? Mr. Chair, I can withdraw this if you want to look at it later. Oh. This was brought to Larissa quite some time ago. She thought it was a, an administrative change huh. um, because it was a, just an oversight that it should have been removed once we were putting the ordinances in. Um, so she sent it out actually with um, in an email earlier of one of the proposed amendments. So, I mean, I can withdraw it and we can okay. address it another time. It was just an inconsistency sure. in the ordinance right. that she thought she could just probably strike yeah. as administrative. It was right. overlooked during the process. That's, a, that's all. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call a recess till 8.15. Okay? We're going to try to get the projection up. We're going to get our copies of our amendment. We're going to reconvene <laughs> at 8.15. Where in the
Thank you for your patience. We're trying to make it a little more clear on what we're doing up here. Uh, so we appreciate you staying with us. I'm going to call this meeting back to order. Uh, where we are is there is a motion on the floor to amend the main motion. And Councilor Gleistein? I'd like to withdraw and send it back to the Ordinance Committee to bring back. Okay, that's it, right? Is that all we have to do? In the same. Okay. I guess I'm really confused. I mean, I'll withdraw my second, which is fine, but why does it need to go back to Ordinance? Okay, or we just don't fix it. That's fine. I mean, I'm just asking. Okay. So that concludes the amendments on 405, unless there's any other amendments that are getting put forward. There are not. Okay. Right. So with that, so discussion on the main motion as amended. Any discussions on the main motion as, on, as amended? Which is the RF. It's the 405 with the removal of our address, right. the whole enchilada. Any discussion on the whole enchilada? No. Yes. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I, I've heard some uh, constituents express concern that they've been engaged in this process for a year to a year and a half, and now we're, we're changing things kind of without them having the ability to at least read and share comment on, on what they are. I supported the RF amendment because I feel like we talked about it at the last couple of meetings and uh, um, it was kind of clear that it actually uh, the chair announced that he was going to introduce um, that topic so uh, but for for some of the other amendments coming I think they have a valid point uh, I although I, I think they'll support them but I wish that there was a way for them to comment or advise on on their stance on these things so that's just okay. a concern of mine so as a point of order can I ask the town clerk can I because we have a public comment after this, can we read the, amend the amendments that are about to be proposed? Sure. Okay, so why don't we do that? So we'll wrap this guy up. We, I'll read the amendments that are about to be proposed. We'll have these guys can public comment if they wish before we do the second order. Fair enough? Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that, a vote on the main motion as amended. All those in favor? All those opposed? We're, we're voting on the four or five. All of these amendments are on 406. Yep. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yes. Excuse me, not 406. I, I got my order screwed up. Peter, are you? I'm, I'm just confused. Okay. We're voting on the proposed changes to the zoning ordinance, the withdrawal of the RF zone, oh, yes, that made most. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to take it one more time because yeah. all those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. So order number 19094 is a second reading on the adoption of proposed chapter 1018, the Town of Scarborough Marijuana Establishment License Ordinance. There are several amendments to this. So in an effort to allow the public to speak to them, I'm going to run through them unofficially, let you guys respond to them before we go into our business. Uh, Councilor Glassian, I'll rely on you if you want to read them and tell us why, and I'll scroll on the screen. Is that fair? Read or make the motions? Nope, just read them. Just, this is, we're, we're not taking any formal motions on this. Yeah, yet. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, the, the first um, uh, change would be just to add a definition of plant, cana plant canopy. The um, ordinance requires a calculation of plant <coughs> canopy in order to uh, go for a certain license a level. Um, the the uh, term is defined under state law 28B MRSA uh, section 102. Um, and so it's just to get it in line with the state and have that definition. Um, the second one is related to that, just when you uh, put your application in that you just show the calculations for the plant canopy. Um, the, the next change um, had to do with uh, uh, getting the, um, that the caregivers that uh, submit an application, the medical marijuana registered caregivers, mark um, certain information as confidential um, so that the town staff who will also be reviewing information for confidential information that should not be put forth um, uh, through FOIA 
because uh, there is things that are protected by um, the Freedom of Access state law and even federal law um, that whoever submits your application will just mark um, what's confidential so that you know, we have two sets of eyes looking at that to make sure that confidential information um, doesn't get out. Um, seems to be a common thing that a lot of other um, applicants put in. Um, I had worked with one of the um, one of our, an attorney here in town who's um, not representing any of the growers, but who actually represents um, who just lives in Scarborough. And um, we talked about the language being much more extensive, but um, at least we're kind of getting getting to the confidentiality to make sure. Um, I know our own attorney um, weighed in on this, but I think um, I personally think it's good compromise language. Um, and then number four was just a uh, an inconsistency in um, what was put forward. Um, tier one said plant canopy, tier two said mature plant canopy, as well as tier three and four. So it's just to re remove the word uh, mature um, in all three of those because we're defining plant canopy. So the, the definition of plant can canopy is by its nature from the state, mature plant. So um, I think there is allowed seedlings and things that don't count in the square footage. So um, just to keep that consistent with the state. Um, and um, so that's just kind of housekeeping. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, also that um, the, the current ordinance, the way it's written is asking for the police chief, the fire chief, and the code enforcement officer to um, weigh in on the applicants, uh, on the application. And so um, what that does is just uh, say, ask them to put it um, in writing. Um, and so uh, that way everyone has a copy of it so that they, they know um, what was or wasn't uh, correct. Um, <clears throat> and number um, six uh, was the current ordinance actually uh, the way as written said that the applicant um, had to, uh, that they could be turned down based on their ability to comply. And so um, it's just been changed um, in order to say that, um, I'm sorry, that's number part of number five. This, uh, this, um, this is a little bit, but anyway, that the applicant doesn't have to, uh, um, that they would just apply with, comply with the ordinance. Um, so it removes the subjectivity of the applicant's ability to comply and it asks for determination of whether the applicant has complied. So that's that. Um, then. Uh, um, number, number six um, is, uh, sorry, I'm taking a second to read this here. Um, I wrote them, but I can't always read them. Um, oh, and this is where the current wording um, said that the town could just hire a third party expert consultant. And so this just gives a little more language to that, that the applicant would have a notice and they would be able to actually respond to the town and they would actually be given a fee. Um, that would allow them to respond back um, on the third party uh, notification around that um, so that they wouldn't just get a bill. Well, we hired an expert, here's a bill. So you get uh, a 10 days to reply to that. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the seventh one is if you look at what's going on with the town, with a lot of other towns, um, there's a lot of things to put in place with this. Um, there's forms, odor mitigation forms, there's application forms, things like that. Um, if we pass this tonight, um, everything will go into effect um, immediately. And so this is just to give the town uh, 30 days. Um, it's not to cause a, a delay, but it's to give the town 30 days to get all the paperwork in order so that if you walk in and you want a license, everybody knows what they're doing next. All the checkoff forms are there and things like that. Um, so that's what that is. I'm not sure I went through them exactly correctly, but I got the crux. Okay, so there is, there's no motion on the table. This is still, I'm asking for public comment on order number 20, excuse me, 19094. And you know the motions that are coming for amendments. Mr. Burke, are you speaking? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is John Burke, Forecaster Way. Um, I'd like to thank the council for considering these amendments this evening. Um, I want to first address confidentiality. There is no workaround on this. 
The statute is abundantly clear. The municipality cannot disclose any information in regards to caregivers. Now, the adult use is different. The rules are set up a little bit differently there. But when it comes to caregivers, it's got to be protected. Uh, so I've presented language to the council on this. Um, I don't know that the language that's being presented right now is I just got a quick glimpse of it, uh, whether or not that that would work. Um, but I think the simple thing is, uh, you know, a, a simple amendment would simply say that any information provided by uh, a caregiver, you know, shall be uh, kept confidential, not subject to the Freedom of Access Act, uh, and shall be secured in a safe manner. The alternative is, the real simple alternative is just copy sell Portland, because they did this, and I believe that theirs is probably sufficient, though they did have a citation issue, um, but it's just a minor clerical error. Uh, this is the first paragraph from the South of Portland, and I did clear up the citation. It's 402. Yeah, that's right. Um, but this is the first paragraph of theirs. Oh, you mean the, in the black right there? I'm sorry, I was reading. Okay. You read in the black, Mr. Burke? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Right, and so, but if you, if you continue on, what, what South Portland did, and probably did it correctly, is instead of submitting, say, your, uh, you know, your proof of being a registered caregiver, you simply go in, show them, the clerk says, okay, good, and we move forward. Um, so that information is actually not even being possessed by the town. Um, I, I think that's pretty simple, but that's up to you guys. Um, the plant canopy definition, there's actually two definitions of plant canopy. Mm -hmm. One definition is in the medical statute and one definition in the adult use. They're pretty much the same, but they are a slight little different in, in the wording. Um, so if you're going to have a plant canopy, I think you just need to make sure that, you know, pursuant to um, the adult use and the medical statute. I can provide that citation later if you need it. Uh, again, I'm just working off what, what was discussed earlier. 30-day uh, delay, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, I, you know, you guys need to get those documents together. They can't apply without them, according to the ordinance, so I don't think that should be a problem. Uh, Third-party experts, I appreciate you guys re taking a look at this. Um, experts are expensive, and someone who, who's been involved in litigation knows how expensive experts are, and some people who claim to be experts aren't experts. So. Uh, though I would prefer my proposed language to this, um, I think this is a good start, and uh, it gives at least the applicant the opportunity to challenge it, which I think is important. Uh, is there anything else? Oh, and finally, uh, I, I appreciate the amendment on removing ability to comply, because uh, I think that's completely subjective. and. Look, it's just tough. To, I don't know how someone can determine ability to comply. But the, uh, the one thing I would say is, what are the roles of the fire chief and the police chief in this process? Um, ordinarily speaking, the police chiefs and fire departments, fire usually looks at you know, fire code issues, um, and the police chief generally looks at the security infrastructure. But are we requiring them to be knowledgeable in every aspect of the state ordinance as well as the local ordinance? Because the local stuff is relatively simple, but the state stuff is far more complicated. So, you know, I, I would suggest that if you're going to amend it today, I would simply just say, you know, the police chief or representative thereof will look at the security infrastructure to sure it's in some compliance, and then with the fire chief to say that they are in compliance with uh, the fire code, both the state and local fire code and then leave um, you know, our commercial co-inspector to handle the rest, which he has been doing uh, for this time. Thank you. Any more? Uh, my name is Nick Messer, I live on Holmes Road. Uh, my business is on Pleasant Hill Road. Um, it's 22,000 square feet, so we pay a good amount of taxes to this town as well. Um, but I would like to address the RF um, one. 
Um, this is a very sensitive subject and I hear everyone's concerns. Is there any way that you can make the residential side that everyone keeps referring to as a clearly different district, a separate district than the commercial RF? Um, I don't understand how we are governed by the Department of Agriculture, how we can say it is denied in a zone we are qualified and regulated for and by. I, I don't know how we can, as Scarborough, redefine what is an agricultural product. That's not our place. Um, and then the fees you guys have put forward are very hefty. Um, and I'm not going to speak on those. All I'm going to say is I don't think I should pay the third party application fee if you're going to ask me for $10,000 for my application. Um, I feel like I'm already paying once. If it's $300 or $1,000 to hire this gentleman and he's going to look over five applications, how's the $30,000, $40,000, dollars $100,000 the town's going to raise not app, you know, good enough for that? Um, and then I would just like to address the fact that the Office of Marijuana Policy will take any of your complaints anonymous or by who you are and follow back up with you. So anyone that does have anyone they want to complain about, feel free to call OMP. Okay. With that, do I have a motion on the floor? So moved. And discussion or amendments, I should say. Can we do this in one since she's read them? Can we do this? No? Okay. They seem separate and distinct. I okay, sure. Take them individually. Okay. Motion one, I move to add the following definition to the proposed draft. Plant canopy shall mean plant canopy as that term is defined in 28 BMRSA section 10541 as may be amended. Is there a second? second? Discussion on the amendment only. All those in favor of the amendment. All those opposed. Are there any more amendments? Mr. Chair? Yes. I move to add the words plant canopy, canopy square footage calculations to section five, part E. Any discussions on the amendment only? Vote on the amendment only. All those in favor? Unanimous. Councilor Gleistein. Motion three, I move to add a part R that reads medical marijuana registered caregivers and other applicants submitting applications and supporting information that is confidential under 22 MRSA section 2425-A12 as may be amended and the Freedom of Information Act 1 MRSA section 4023F shall mark such information as confidential. Any discussion on the amendment only? All those in favor of the amendment? Councilor Gleistein? I move to strike the word mature from section six, parts B, C, and D of the proposed draft. Second. Any discussions on the amendment only? All those in favor of the amendment? Councillor Gleistein. I move to amend section seven, part E, to read in part, no local license shall be granted by the town council until the police, the fire chief, and the code enforcement officer have all made the determination that the applicant complies with this and all other local ordinances and state laws and provides a written recommendation to the town clerk. Second. Discussion on the amendment only. I, d I just wanted to, because uh, someone asked me this question earlier, um, this the the the, uh, the police chief, the fire chief, and the code enforcement officer um, participating. That was in the original write-up that came out of the ordinance committee. Okay, mm -hmm. Councillor Hayes. No, I was just trying to. I was just curious about it. Uh, the gentleman that addressed us from the podium about trying to make some language change to those. Can you put, your, can you put your microphone on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was just kind of following up the recommendation that some of that language get amended. Um, as suggested, so I don't know if, if there's any energy for that or not from this group. No. I, I was trying to think through the same thing. I, uh, so, 
to the extent that they're, this is under their purview, I think the fire, the chief, and the code enforcement officer, that's what they're signing off on. Um, and I'm unclear, I guess, whether uh, you know, the state laws as it relates to marijuana is in their purview. I don't know if anybody can answer that for me. Uh, Mr. Burke, do you have an answer? Sure, <coughs> come on up. Yeah. I'm not saying we're going to take your word for it, but... Uh, oh. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I think the, the answer is yes. I mean, the state ordinance is, you know, is incorporated into our ordinance. So I think the answer will be yes. Um, but just so you know that before it even... I don't know, it's a little bit unclear in this process here, but I would suspect that by the time these inspections occur, that the applicant in Scarborough will already have some form of conditional approval at the adult use level. Uh, and so that's sort of a pre-approval, uh, that they have all the sort of the necessary paperwork in. Um, so that should give the green light there. But I, I definitely would encourage some guidance as to what they'll do. Um, it just will help at least someone like me figure out, all right, these guys are doing this, these are guys are doing that. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Any more discussion? I think that was one of the intents of the 30 days. Yeah. Because this is a lot of policy, and there will be some rules set up around it, checklists, that types of thing, and it could be re-looked at in the future. Okay. Any more? All those in favor of the amendment only. <laughs> Councilor Gleistein? I move to amend section 7, part E2, to read in part, where an agent of the town determines that it is necessary for the town to consult with a third-party expert on an application or portion of an application, it may do so and charge the cost of that third-party expert consultation to the applicant. Before doing so, however, the town shall give reasonable notice to the applicant of its determination of need, including the basis for that determination, the third party that the town proposes to engage, and the estimated fee for the third party consultation. The applicant shall have opportunity to respond for up to 10 business days from receipt of the town's notice before the town engages the third party. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Councilor Hamill? Yeah, I, I this kind of, uh, I remember, you know, I was talking about this and the issue of, uh, you know, the costs and, you know, in the situation that we're in now with no revenue share at all uh, uh, to the local level, this is just something that's a practical way of mitigating expense for the town. So I, you know, I, I've heard the feedback about our, our license fees being high and this also being high, but uh, there's just no other way for us to try to control the expense of the town without this. Gleistein? Uh, yes, so this doesn't stop the town from doing the third party consultant. It just gives um, notice to the applicant. And um, that was, it's actually language that's in a lot of other um, ordinances around. And this actually didn't come, um, the language here was helped by uh, Mr. Burke, but um, actually I have a former town councilor who's a neighbor who had brought this up early on when he read the ordinance, like, wow, that's really open ended for the applicants. So that's kind of where the application came up. Doesn't stop the town from doing it. All those in favor? Councilor Gleistein? I move to amend section 15 to read, the effective date of this ordinance shall be 30 days following adoption by the town council. Second. Discussion? Yeah, I thought this was a good catch, uh, you know, thinking through this and allowing time for the implementation detail to be worked out. and. And I think it also struck a nice balance between, you know, our role and then, um, you know, making sure we're doing respectful staff work that needs to be done. Any more? All those in favor of the amendment only. We are now on to the main motion as amended. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Councilor Gleistein. Um, I'd like to thank my fellow councillors for the work um, and consideration they've given these ordinances and the amendments. 
Um, I'd especially like to thank um, the residents who've spent hours and hours of their time uh, reviewing these and um, I think improving them at every level with almost every suggestion that they made. Um, I uh, had uh, started out on a, in a different place with this um, and I've spent a lot of time talking to people, I guess I would say, on both sides. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know how ticked people are at me tonight for making amendments. There was a lot more I wanted to make. Um, I, I really, I finally came to understand that one of the main goals that we were trying to achieve is to make sure that our current um, uh, businesses in town could uh, transition their business to what the state approves. Um, I, even in that vein, I would probably even, um, if it were possible, lower the license fees, but um, it is what it is right now. Um, I, there was a couple of statements that got made um, during a lot of the discussions. Um, one was by one of our growers who said um, that they got shown the property by SEDCO, uh, and that is our economic development group. And so I think um, you can agree with that or disagree with that, but that's something that occurred to bring uh, growth, this growth to town. And so um, as I learned more about this, I became, uh, in, in hoping to find a compromise, uh, wanted to make sure that we were looking out for both sides. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I hesitate to vote yes tonight, um, even though I feel like we've come up with a compromise. I do ha still have some problems. Um, I feel like the, the, the performance standards should be in um, the purview of the planning board under 405 um, so that they could develop um, um, performance standards over time for things like odor mitigation. Right now, the, the planning board has no role. Um, I, I think, um, as Mr. Burke has said a number of times, um, this is gonna change. Uh, the state law is gonna change. I, I hope we'll be able to uh, actually peel back some of this once we trust the state <laughs> that they're doing their job. Um, I do think it represents a compromise. Uh, you know, it's probably a little too quick for me. I'd probably like to have a little more work over this, uh, but I do appreciate uh, the opportunity I've been afforded to have people listen to um, some of the work that I've done on this, and I especially, again, thank all the residents on both sides of this issue. Uh, Councilor Katarina? Uh, yeah, as the chair of ordinance, um, I would just remind folks that this has been in front of the ordinance for two years. Um, there have been plenty of opportunities for people to weigh in, to make changes, to whatever. Um, it's a little, it's a little, a little, I don't want to use the word disconcerting, but that's okay. I mean, this is why we have this second, we go through the public process again. But it is um, hard to have uh, someone come in with a, a lot of changes kind of at the last minute. but. That's, you know, it is what it is. That that's part of the process. Um, I'm I'm very pleased with the work that we did as the ordinance committee and the members of the public and the growers and everyone who had a say. It's not perfect. Uh, it is an evolving business in the state. I I can guarantee we're going to see some changes coming out of the state. Um, as it. it now, finally, goes into effect, and the towns who have chosen to do something uh, with the marijuana laws um, have experience with it. So, as I've said from day one in ordinance, you know, this is a living document. Let's give it a chance to see what works and what doesn't, and, you know, we can look at it again, you know six months, a year from now, whatever, but let's get some experience under our belts. So thank you to everyone who helped uh, with this long process. Any more? No? Uh, I, admittedly, I wasn't incredibly involved in this process. I think that this is difficult because the default position in my, from the town's perspective, is indifference because we're not sharing in the revenue. And I think that one of the, frictions here is, quote, what's in it for the town financially. And I, I, I wish there was more in it for the town financially, because I think we could reach a little bit more of a consensus. Um, I did want to thank uh, John Burke and Betsy Gleinstein. You both, we sat for about an hour and a half the other day. Two people, what I perceive to be off sides of the spectrum of this. Uh, we agreed on some things. Maybe they're minor, but the bottom line is we got a little bit of both in. Um, I'm, 
I'm showing my true colors here tonight. I'm not going to support this. I think it's incredibly cost prohibitive. Uh, and it, it's, this, was a, this is an example of, I think, the council's will is much greater than my own, and I'm going to respect that. Um, but I think we're talking about small business owners that are faced with uh, licensing fees that I believe are greater than Portland. Um, and I have a hard time doing that to um, a small business owner. Um, in addition, like the gentleman in the front row said, and then um, <clears throat> I loosely defined third party analysis, which could run who knows the cost. Um, so financially, I think this is actually unfair to the grower community. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I've been pretty transparent with my former, my current council members. I'm just bending to the will of the council. I, it's not, I don't, I didn't have the political capital to go to bat on this, but you know, somebody said in public comment that fees don't go down and I just, the, my final plea to my fellow councilors would be, let's keep an open mind. Perhaps the fees should go down. So with that, is there any more discussion? No? All those in favor? All those opposed? Five to two. Okay, I've lost my place. Order number 20006, act on the names posted to the various committees, boards, as recommended by the Appointments and Negotiation Committee on January 8th, 2020. Yes. Councillor Hamill? Yes, thank you. And um, just uh, bear with me a moment while I find my place on my note here. Um, yes, we are. This is a second notice of, uh, uh, of some appointments. Uh, <coughs> oh, yes. Yeah, when all else fails, uh, Thank you. hard copy works. Uh, order number 20 006. <laughs> I'm going to move the approval on names that were posted previously that we recommended. Um, from the Appointments and Negotiations Committee on January 8th, uh, reappointing Marjorie DeSantis to the Board of Assessment as a full voting member, term to expire 2022, reappointing Rachel Henderson and Nick McGee as full voting members, and Rick Meinkin as second alternate to the Planning Board with terms to expire in 2022, and finally reappointing James Herbert as full voting member and Alton Chip Howe as the first alternate to the Zoning Board of Appeals with terms to expire in 2022. This was a priority for us uh, to uh, get appointments approved quickly for uh, quasi-judicial uh, committees that do rely on people uh, uh, with tenure and with technical knowledge. So with that, I, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous? Moving on, uh, order number, this is new business now, kind of, back to it. Uh, order number 20008, first reading and schedule, schedule a public hearing and second reading on the request to change a street name pursuant to chapter 309, the town of Scarborough street development names and number ordinances, section four, renaming of existing streets. This is brought to us by an applicant. I think I'll let the town clerk tee it up or, no? Yep. Town, Mr. Applicant, would you like to? Come forth. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I'm Mr. Applicant, uh, 19 <laughs> Wild Rose Lane. Um, uh, my wife and I purchased a property uh, down in Higgins Beach and uh, quickly realized when we were getting our neighbor's mail all the time that oh. there's a 14 shipwreck lane house right next to 14 Kent Street. Um, the only house on Kent Street is named 14 is numbered 14 also. Um, we are the only house on Kent, on Kent Street. We, that's the house we, we bought. Um, kind of asked the neighbors why. Um, many of the neighbors said, no, that's shipwreck. Um, they didn't even, some of them didn't even know that there was a Kent Street. Um, I gave you the information in the packet. I've uh, been in touch with um, the Historical Society, uh, well, unofficially with the Historical Society and other neighbors in the area. And, um, and you, you can even see on the Google map that I sent to you that uh, Google thinks that that is also shipwreck uh, road. So um, the Kent Street that's in red in your packet was put in by some by Toady, um, and there's a little asterisk where the house is. So the only house on Kent Street currently is 14 Kent Street, Lord knows why. Um, 
Kent Street, uh, the sign was obscured by a row of hedge bushes and a fence for years and years and years and has now finally been exposed because that, the house kind of at that right at the bend there uh, was, was torn down and redone and they tore, took down the bushes so you can actually see the Kent Street Street, street sign now. But um, we're asking that it, it be uh, abandoned, Kent Street be abandoned and our house be renumbered. Um, I believe the uh, 20 is the, is the recommendation because for whatever reason, they're, they want to leave a gap because there's some space in between, even though those aren't buildable lots in between that house and my house. But um, that's perfectly fine with me. 20 is a nice round number. Um, so that's our request. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Just to be clear, uh, Mr. Royal used the term abandoned. That means something very specific in the language of streets. Uh, uh, I think it's just renaming. Renaming. Just renaming, okay. yeah. We've got to take the sign down. <laughs> Is there a motion on the floor? I'm so moved. Oh, okay. Uh, second. I'm sorry. <laughs> second. Second. Yeah. Discussion. So this is just a quick point, but I, w I won't even tell you why I know this. But it's really hard to get Google to fix that. But you know. Now we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that will be much better off because right. it's really hard. Yeah. And just, uh, this is kind of an obscure thing. Uh, in my tenure here at Scarborough, this has never come forward before. Typically, street uh, issues are dealt with at the planning board level with the creation of new streets. That's done with coordination with staff and the addressing officer. Uh, but in the instance of an existing street, an existing street number, it's actually the purview of the town council, and that's why the matter is in front of you. Uh, and just procedurally, uh, I miss the fact that a public hearing is required as part of this process. So. Um, trying to respect the process required of your ordinance. This comes to you as a first reading, um, proposing that we do public hearing and second reading at the next meeting just to expedite the process. Any more discussion? The only thing I would say is, Mr. Riley, don't show up to the next meeting. You don't have to. Don't show up, <laughs> don't show up to the next meeting? Yeah, right, right. Well, this was entertaining. Yeah, right. No, for, sure. for the four of us who are still here. Right. <laughs> uh, with that said, all those in favor? Thank you. Thanks, sir. It might be back for the community center. <laughs> okay, uh, order number 2009, act on the request to adopt <coughs> the 2020 council goals. Uh, I'm gonna say that's brought forth by me, so I'll take the lead. Uh, several weeks ago, we had a, um, as I've referenced before, we had a, a annual town council goal setting workshop on a Saturday for four hours. Um, and part of that is to essentially just set the goals for us as a body as we move forward into the new year. Um, and so I'll read aloud the ones that we have come up with. Uh, number one, prepare a five-year financial plan to forecast operating expenses, revenues, and integrate with a five-year capital improvement plan complete by September 2020. Uh, I Number two, quarterly workshops with the following agenda. One, review quarterly financial reports. Two, a detailed presentation from two department heads with an emphasis on financing, finances, excuse me. Three, pipeline projects, agenda items, et cetera. Number three, council get, uh, agrees to strive to maintain a no more than 3% increase in the mill rate. Number four, council agrees to revisit the growth management ordinance as required by the current ordinance. In conjunction with the BOE, the town council will come to an agreed upon set of facts and language for all of us to use as reference. Um, an, uh, uh, an additional part to these goals are the norms that we had last year and we, um, I'm putting them forward to continue to adopt them. Um, these are more behavioral norms. Acknowledge one another's thoughts and positions and be curious about them, seek to understand. Be civil and respectful during dialogues. Begin and end with what's best for the community in mind. Improve internal town council communications and actively practice humility. So those are our goals and norms. And with that, do I have a motion? So moved. And a second. And discussions. Councilor Clucci. So I just have a, uh, I guess, clarification. The, the goal actually reads correctly and uh, that's the one the council agrees to strive to maintain a no more than 3% increase in the mill rate. So I think that's a solid goal. Um, when we display the mill rate through the planning process, we, we have a policy that we follow uh, to determine what the valuation is or the denominator. And <clears throat> due to the reval, that policy, and it actually says this in the policy, isn't going to work very well. 
it, it, it's going to distort things. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page, that we're, we're striving to get an actual mill rate increase of no, no more than 3%. So I just wanted to clarify that. Anybody else? Yep. I just want to pick, I just want to uh, thank counter, Council Gucci for that. It was a very good pickup. Um, the time back to the policy to see that that was not going to work. So I really appreciate that. Any others? Yeah, Council I'd Hamill? I'd uh, like to thank the chair and uh, fellow councilors for the energy they and uh, they're devoting a Saturday morning to this effort. And um, I think that we're, we're going to go the extra mile this year with these, with them being measurable and specific and with, uh, you know, follow on tasks that you know, we'll be speaking to in a minute in terms of committees taking the lead on various aspects of these. Any more? Okay. With that, all those in favor? Unanimous. Moving on, these are extensions from these goals. Uh, order number 2010, act on the request to charge the communication committee to double the current subscribership to the town e-newsletter. Is there a motion? So moved. Discussion. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a clarifying point, I guess. I, I, I did ask Councillor Johnson earlier, uh, the other Councillor Johnson, uh, uh, this is kind of, a, there, there's kind of a, a, a subtle divide between what the town does and what the council does, and we don't have control over the email membership. So I wanted to make sure that he had communicated with town staff, and, and he had, and, and so was supported. So I, I fully support this call. Yep. Councillor Johnson? Yeah, I'd just like to add the, uh, yeah, we had discussions with Larissa. She's not here. She's thrilled that we're going to actually take this action. She's been doing this kind of by herself. So I think uh, the committee, we're going to actually have this as an agenda item on the next communications uh, committee for action steps on actually how to do this. What is the plan on how to do this? Because if you look at the uh, past communication committee's artifacts, we, we talk a lot about possibly communicating with the uh, community through Facebook and YouTube and in the website. And those are all good uh, mediums, but it's sometimes you have to really just choose probably the most efficient and drive that home. And we've, we've through the discussions, feel that the e-newsletter is the most, uh, at least commonly used medium that we can reach the most people. So I think a doubling of the subscription level up to three thousand would be a would, would be a good goal to uh, go for. Look forward to it. Any more? Yeah, my quick comment is to all of these, and um, Councillor Glycine has said this a few times. I I really appreciate these charges coming from the council to draw attention to these matters before we go to committee. So I think that this structure, um, I I I think people would appreciate. What are we doing? What is what is happening in committee, and, and this allows us to bring more attention to it and really hold ourselves more accountable. Um, so it's great now that the communication committee needs to tell us how 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 they're doing towards their goal every month or so. So with that, um, all those in favor? Unanimous. Order number twenty zero one one. Act on a request to charge the Rules and Policy Committee to develop an action plan for the council to follow in order to execute a charter review. And is there a motion? I'll move it. Discussion? Yeah. Councilor Caterina? Um, I know I've had this discussion with a couple of counselors, and I did some research by talking to Todi to look into you know what we've done in the past. This is an unusual step, in my opinion, to give over anything to do with the charter committee um, to the rules and policies. However, that being said, um, I would feel okay with this as long as we keep it very narrow and all we're doing is saying, well, you know, we're going to put out X on us by a certain date for names and then, because everything really needs to happen in council mm -hmm. on, on charter. Yeah. So um, that would, that's my only comment on this. Councilor Hamill? Yeah, I think those are valid uh, concerns uh, that uh, Councilor Katarina has, has expressed. Um, yet at the same time, I like the idea of having somebody on point to kind of tee this up, mm -hmm. and that's sort of the spirit that we have with, with most of the other things coming out of, uh, 
out of our workshop. So I'm, I'm fine with starting there. Councilor Cucci? So I, uh, I share some of the, the comments that uh, Councilor Katarina and Hamill made, but I, um, I, I kind of feel like I need to wordsmith this a little. So the way it reads, we're actually delegating that authority to mm. the, the way it says the, the Rules and Policy Committee to develop an action plan for the council to follow. I feel like we need to insert proposed or something mm. so that the council retains that authority. This is just some pre-work that Rules and Policy is going to do. So if uh, that's okay, I'd like to offer that as an amendment to insert the word proposed yes. prior to action plan. I would second that. And strike the word develop? No, strike Just the word to follow. Okay. D uh, develop a proposed action plan. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was out of turn. So Could have been either way. That's your amendment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I second it. And second. So discussions on the amendment. Yeah, not to amend the amendment, but I was going to point out that um, we've got the same language in the next several um, orders like this, so we may yeah. want to try to tidy it up in one school if we can. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So my discussion point would be I would be okay with amending every single one moving forward the same way because I, I think that's important. We are This is pretty sacred territory here, and so I, I think it's important that we don't overstep. So I fully support the amendment. So all those in favor of the amendment? And then discussions on the main motion as amended. Right. So um, that is definitely the intent to keep it incredibly narrow. I mean, I, I think it's going to be like, a 45 minute discussion to an hour if yeah. that so um, it's just to kind of we don't do it but every once every 10 years um, it's just to kind of say hey let's talk about some dates um, so we just it's just a starting point do we want to put out a separate application to you know review the application that's on form uh, you know online and say do we want to kind of make a different one just just very housekeeping type things and I'm glad you brought that up because it's absolutely no intent to say, well, we've said it now and this is what the council's going to do. It's just to bring it forward. Okay. All those in favor? Order number 20012, act on a request to charge the Finance Committee to develop the nature of the five-year plan that is to be produced by staff by September 2020. Is there a motion? You guys got to look alive here. Is there a second? I mean, second can, can we get, can we get it's, through? It's these two, so we're, we're asleep at the switch. The Is there a proposed amendment, Councillor Colucci? <laughs> um, I, I honestly was not not reading one on uh, okay. the, the requirement uh, okay. for one, but right. if somebody else sees one, nope. let me know. Fair enough. <laughs> Discussion. All those in favor? Order number 20013, act on the request to charge the ordinance committee to develop an action plan for the council to follow in order to review the current growth management ordinance. Is there a motion? I'll move. So moved. Second. Discussion, Councilor Geistein? Just can we announce that's already scheduled? Yep. Yep. Do you want to announce it? Uh, no, you can. It's already scheduled for February 12th, I believe. I oh, right I'm time. sorry. No, no, no. You're, no. you're ahead. I'll talk about oh, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> no, okay. it's okay. But sorry. thank you. I'll but make a note. Yeah. You are. You, <laughs> I'll make a note for my counselor comments on that. All right. So, any, any yeah. more discussion? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, as the chair of ordinance, I'm a little confused by this. I mean, I get Fair the enough. intent, but it's like so to request to charge ordinance to develop an action plan for the council to follow in order to review current growth management ordinance. So usually what ordinance does is someone comes up with a proposed ordinance or changes the ordinance and then we discuss it in an ordinance and then we bring it back to council. Yeah. This council. This is not the typical behavior of the ordinance committee. So you are asking us then to develop an action plan. Maybe it's to find a ball carrier to bring mm -hmm. forward or to propose an action plan. I mean, it's we got to get it in motion somehow, right? We got to got to be a ball carrier. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my discussion to it is, I think we we have two things. We're trying to hold ourselves accountable to trying to get certain things done, right? And we have an inexperienced council. So I just I thought that. 
First of all, I fully agree, Councillor Caterina, that this is outside uh, the typical behavior of the ordinance. Right. But to Councillor Gleisen's point, if it's a slow week and you have 45 minutes, we can whip it up, so to speak. And you know, and no, no, okay. I, I, uh, I, I would say if there's something, and I don't know how I would do this. It's something to do to, to make, have the ordinance committee address the growth management ordinance within the next six months and report back to council or something okay. along those lines. But I don't know what the Councilor Cucci first. It, yeah, I guess I, it's sort of a question. Um, if I recall correctly, in the ordinance is actually a clause that says it, yeah. it will be reviewed. Right. So what's our normal procedure for when, right. who, who does that fall under? Is that Jay or, or is it the council supposed Jay, to be the ordinances? Jay, you want to come on up? And <laughs> Jay, must be Jay. I knew you were sticking out for something. You're still here, so. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Hi, Sorry, Jay Chase, Jay. planning director. <laughs> um, so, good question. Um, you know, the question is, what's the normal procedure? In my time here, we've had a few discussions around the growth management ordinance, and typically that's generated out of um, what either the planning department or long range planning uh, committee has seen coming down the pike. And there's been conversations around. Uh, most recently, two, three years ago, about increasing the reserve pool is, is the most recent example I can give. Um, in my time, um, you know, as director, we haven't looked at the growth management ordinance, and I don't recall before that in the previous 10 years a time when it was just sort of reviewed just because it says to review it. Not to say that we shouldn't be doing that, but um, so I don't. I would say I don't know that there is a normal process as to what was just talked about with the ordinance committee. Um, certainly, I imagine I'm being involved with this process, or at least I would like to uh, offer my services right. in that regard. Um, so, you know, certainly can work with town manager and whoever on council um, is sort of going to be the ball carrier, as I think was mentioned, to try to devise an action plan. Um, Honestly, I, I sort of stayed here to see where this is going, so I don't have an answer for you. I, I envision perhaps a process coming out of this. Uh, there could be a series of workshops to kind of assess how growth yeah. has happened, and and then the council can have discussion around whether that's acceptable or not, and what, and then maybe some further, more detailed work as to what could be done to the ordinance to tighten things up if you yeah. think that's necessary. Yeah. Councilor Gleisney. Uh, oh, Johnson. That was, sorry, head fake. Councilor Johnson. I have a Johnson. comment on this because I recall the discussion at the workshop on this and <clears throat> that we were supposed to come up with a common understanding and language so we could have discussions with BOE on growth and impacts to the school. I had a call today that lasted an hour from somebody that we had, believe it or not, just got done reading the growth ordinance. And his question to me was, I see 135 growth permits in the growth ordinance. But if you build a 10-unit apartment house, how many growth permits is that? And I said, to tell you the truth, I can't answer that. Right. Because I've read the growth ordinance several times. I'm trying to understand it, going to rely on you. I'm sure Kat G. Marie will invite you over to give us a, you know, a crash course on it because it pushes you down into the zoning ordinance. And then that's where it starts getting fuzzy and fractionalized and whatnot. So I, I really think part of the charge is for the council as a whole is to really understand what is the growth ordinance that we've got, what does it mean, so we can have that discussion with the Board of Education. Councilor Gleistein and then, and then Councilor Hamill. Um, I do support this as written because to me it was to develop a plan, you know, of action for the council. Growth is, a, um, is the number one issue I hear about from every single person, uh, you know, that I talk to. Um, and. Uh, you know, you have to understand it before you can do anything about it. I think um, there's a lot of sensitivity around the fact that the only time it has come in front of the council in the last few years is to increase the pool. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think that we have an obligation to look at it. I think this is written to get to that. I, you know, I think, you know, we should have some deadlines um, for action plans coming out, um, kind of like you say, keep updated what we're going to be doing. You know, I mean, we don't need deadlines in this, but keep updating people. Hey, this is the action we've taken. It needs to be on people's agendas to get this done, and I support it the way it's written. Council Hamill? Sounds to me like we ought to sign up that person who called Ken today as a, someone to participate mm. in this. Oh, he'd gladly come. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Councillor Hayes. Hayes. Um, based on the conversation, I just hate the word Smith too, but just wondering, do we really want to change, would people be interested in changing, the, this says order to review, do we want the order to actually update the growth ordinance? Review and in that way it fits like, more in the framework of what Jean Marie said? Or? Well, I mean, what, what is review, I mean, what's the action in review? I mean, I, I'd yeah. be more interested in. Well, the stat, the statute, the ordinance, and I don't have it right in front of me, um, specifically talks about reviewing every whatever right, it ten is, years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I think I read that, this is just me, I read that as saying, okay, so we get, we make Jay go back, yeah. crunch numbers, and tell us, you know, every year how many have been pulled, what's it look like, what's the trending look like, and do we need to change it? So that could be... You guys, as a committee, could charge him to do that. Yeah, and, and I'm fine. I mean, I we just leave this the way it is, yeah. and then we'll deal with it. In order. Well, the, I, get and, confused, <laughs> I get confused with the structure from time to time. And this is this is an action plan for the council. It's right. not an action plan for them right. to actually okay. do it. So then, when it gets to council, we could say we're going to review it, we're going to change right. it, we're going to yeah, update it. Well, yeah. anything that I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> Any anything that comes out of committees <coughs> is just it's always reviewed by the, the council. The council can say, yeah, we think that's great, or no, go back and do it again. So yeah, and that's how committees work. It's not just because the committee votes it out doesn't mean that it's passed in stone. So, Council Cucci. Yeah, I, I, to that point, I'd like to insert my amendment or move to <laughs> um, amend order 2013 to read uh, move approval on the request to charge the ordinance committee to develop a proposed action plan for the council to follow in order to review the, the current growth mirror. I would second that. I'm not taking discussion. All those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need it on that one. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. That was. Any more discussion on the main motion as amended? I guess, I guess my only thing is, I mean, I think Jay's, Jay's comments to us demonstrate that we need an action plan. I think that it's unclear to him, it's unclear to us. Right. There is a need to review this growth ordinance. Right. We're all kind of confused on how does that happen. Uh, you know, if Jay does 99% of the work, then great. I mean, you know, and obviously that it probably is going to fall on Jay, but, you know, we have the planning director, and this is not a criticism of Jay, but saying, well, I don't really know what we do. And, and right. we're up here saying, well, we don't really know what we do. So. Right. In education, we call that a need for an action plan. So, so that's why I think that at least having well, three musketeers here, we'll right? So, and I, I'm sorry because you you get the last word, but no. I just want to make sure because of what Jean Marie said. Like to me, this is not updating the growth numbers. Right. That's great. This is about the ordinance. Right. Um, so, you know, that's he right. updates the growth numbers for us, and we're going to yep. be looking at that in the workshop. Right. So, right. Well, oh. Oh. oh, general question. I sure. Well, maybe we could do it in our discussion because I, I'm, I don't know how you, because this, this really spans two ordinances. It's right. a growth ordinance tied into the zoning ordinance. Yep. Correct? Mm -hmm. Good question. Well, they're all related. Right. Yeah. So it's more of a review of the growth ordinance. It's review mm -hmm. of our growth yep. in the town of Scarborough. Right. Our and understanding or our... It's our, of the ordinance. Okay. Well... And we can grow and related ordinance. Well, we can start the yeah. process. So I think we need an amendment. Yeah. That's why we need to understand it. Well, I'd like to offer an amendment then. Um, but I don't know where we're at in the process. We're good. We're main motion as amended, so it's clean. Uh, to so review you. the current growth management ordinance and other ordinances related to growth other sections of ordinances related to growth. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, yeah. Is there a second to that? Second. Discussion, I'll ask Jay to weigh in. Yeah, I think that's going to be a natural outgrowth of the discussion because the growth management ordinance to the, to the question from uh, uh, Councillor Johnson or that came through you about, you know, um, the fractional units. Well, that refers directly back to the zoning ordinance. So, I, you know, I think. Okay, you, I'll, I'll so withdraw. Sort of one, one begets the other. Okay. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm seeing this as ultimately what we want to do is as a council say, hey, is there an action we can take to manipulate growth if we feel like it needs to increase or decrease or stay the same? Manipulate like that's, growth? Uh, manipulate growth is the wrong word. I'm just, we're in discussion, so I'm just throwing it out. I'm just, I, what I'm sensing is the council wants to be able to say that we have synthesized all the information, right. we've had a 360 re review right. of our growth ordinances, and does it jive with where we want to be? And it's not. And we just be, want to get there. And it's not going to be an overnight process. No, it's not. No, no deadlines. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I'm confident that this is a big enough net for us to cast yeah. Yeah. as a committee. Just, just keep in mind what gave rise to this was an outside consultant study and then a, uh, a lengthy committee process, the Growth and Services Committee, that came right. up with this ordinance. So it was years in the works. Oh, yeah. um, so it, it's not a simple undertaking, but an important one, certainly. Okay. Okay. Take a vote. With that, all in favor? Uh, I'm going to let the vice chair um, tee this one up after I read it. Order number 2014, act on the request to charge the appointments and negotiations committee to develop an action plan to charge the coordinated staff process and recommendation of all ad hoc committees moving forward. What so if you can say? believe this, it was wordier before. It was much wordier. I don't even know what it says. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> so let me provide a little, a little explanation here. I'm the sponsor of this, you know, one reason is because I'm just thrilled to be out of non-action land. The other, <laughs> the other is uh, this did not this did not come through our offsite, our half day. It came through a pretty robust committee discussion that uh, Councillor uh, that Jean Marie and I had in the Appointments and Negotiations Committee. You know, and Chairman Johnson was there, and, and uh, uh, Town Manager was there. Tom Hall was there with us. So that's. That's sort of why I'm sponsoring this one, and this was along trying to be along the same lines to help us tee up the staffing uh, and recommendations for ad hoc committees going forward. I know we we have had a good result with uh, staffing the ad hoc community center committee, oh, but this okay. is a way oh, okay. of, of us to try to get geared for dealing with the other processes that are referenced in the CEA, including the the downtown and community, the okay. downtown community, and there's a third one. I don't know if there's a school committee, but there's a downtown committee. Yeah, there's, there's three, three yeah. processes. Okay. Yeah. So that was the, the intent gotcha. of this. And, gotcha. you know, uh, yeah. Councilor right. Cloutier has been so successful with helping us to own the language. I'd be open to his suggestions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Councilor Cloutier? <laughs> well, I, I would like to offer that, but I, I'm, I'm still a little confused on what it actually says. So <laughs> assuming we, we insert Should negotiations committee to develop a proposed action plan, to charge and coordinate staffing process and recommendations. Uh, so I, is this how we charge ad hoc committees or I, I guess I'm not clear on what, or, or how we fill the vacancies or? or our, our role is to recommend um, appointees for committees. Yeah. And part of this new work with ad hoc committees is a charge. <coughs> so we thought we would offer a charge for the council to approve and then you know, authorize along with a, a similar process to, to make recommendations on staff. Okay, so I'm, I'm clear. So like for the downtown committee, yeah. the council charged the town manager last time with coming up with a charge for that committee. You're saying we should have a council, a, a process defined. Yeah, um, run it through committee. It's, it's the same concept as what we tried to do with, with the other committees. So. Is this discussion or? Yep, we're on discussion. Yep. Okay. Um, so I would just oh, like to see this to say for all committees moving forward. Um, and um, I mean, I've, I've had a conversation with a number of people. Um, I think, I've, and I've talked to a lot of residents, I think our, our, our process for filling committee vacancies, and we actually talked about this at the Senior Advisory Committee, um, needs some tightening up. I use the, um, I kind of use the process that, uh, Vice Chair Hamill developed for um, putting timelines around um, staff staff rec reviews and things like that. Um, I think we could use some timelines to say, you know, apply by this date. Um, I think we possibly might consider a policy. You know, for example, I know uh, a couple of people that have applied for transportation. Um, we've got a couple of people who have been on for a long time and want to stay on. They're also on a couple of other committees. So it may be time to say, hey, 
you know, what does that whole process look like? You know, is it really that if you're on something and you want to stay on, you get to stay on, or when your term is up, do you do you are you go into contention to apply? I'm not saying one way or the other what we should do. I'm just saying if we're going to look look at this, maybe we could just look at a process for for uh, for committees. Um, you know, and we could say there's a deadline. You apply by a certain date. I don't know what all the rules are, but I'm just saying look at it for committees, not just for ad hoc committees. Mr. Chair. I need a second before we go any further. Can somebody second this before? Oh, oh, I thought you meant you needed a yeah. second to rest or something. No, well, that too. I'll give you a second. I'll give you a second. <laughs> You're right. I, it did come across like I had to get it myself. Moment. That wasn't moment. that much gravity. I took it. I took it. And through the chair, yes. Mr. Manager, do we have, um, do we have policies in place that address when committee, I mean, it's part of the, for the regular standing committees. There are certain committees that have term limits associated with their, right. so, uh, uh, but not all. And, and certainly there, there are some that have, uh, have had appointees for a decade or better. Um, it's not suggesting their service is invaluable to the, to the conversation. Um, I, I think what's being suggested is quite a bit different than what this order, at least yeah. initially intended to be. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, and I appreciate the comment that uh, Councillor Langstein made. Uh, it does expand the scope more broadly, but it doesn't address, the original intent of this was to get at ad hoc committees, specifically a couple referenced in the CEA. So I don't disagree with her concepts in general about other areas for improvement. Yeah, I was just going to, if we, if we look back uh, again, what was our objective here? Mm. If we rewind till we in September, I believe of last year, we were talking about the downtown committee. And, and so, and things happen in the town that the forces take over and that's fine. But that was just a great example of, okay, that got dropped because we got distracted. And so I think the conversation we had was the work that committees can do, excuse me, can at least again say okay hey there's that CEA here's the downtown you know they can take the ball so to speak because that ball has continues to be dropped yeah it was it was literally a priority over six months ago yeah and for example it could also uh, help us to define what what have we accomplished you know with the ad hoc community center committee yeah did that fulfill the the requirement of the down CEA or not <coughs> so I mean so it would I think it would be uh, the job of our committee to help frame that question and a similar approach for, for the other things. So we don't have another one that runs, you know, that gets solved before we decide if that's how we want to handle it or not. And that's, that yep. was the, I think, where we were thinking. So it, before I uh, move to insert proposed, uh, <clears throat> just to clarify, I think what you're going to come back to the com uh, council with is this is how we could do some things better. And it, primarily as it relates to ad hoc committees. Uh, you're going to come back with a proposal and then we'll be able to read it and opine on it. And we might say, oh, well, we should amend, sounds like with this one, rules and policy, um, uh, you know, the actual charge of the uh, appointments committee. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just wanted to clarify that that's yeah, probably the that's, process. That I, I'm not opposed to that. And I think that we, you know, for example, you know, the ad hoc committee center committee and process, you know, we've got a lot to learn from that. What can, what can we bring forward? What we can build on, you know, so terms of this other work ahead so well, just with all due respect this is just an observation not intended to be critical but I, I fear if you want something done you're better tasking me to do it uh, the, the the notion of death by committee yeah 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 uh, all, all good intentions but I suspect it will take months uh, on a yeah. good uh, on a good timeline <laughs> to return this so if, if yeah. there's urgency underscoring any of this yeah uh, I think there's other methods to move things quicker yeah, that's so, I mean, that's a fair comment. Yet, at the same time, I, we came out of that half day saying we were going to assign accountability to committees and then have them move forward. So that was the same concept here. I don't, I mean, I agree with, with Tom with what you're saying there. It's not intended to be a, a substitution or it's somehow real. replacing what the staff's going to do. But, but it, I, I don't know. It just seemed like another starting point. Now, maybe this one is just not defined as well as the others. Uh, sounds like it. it 
it isn't. But and, and I'm pleased to work directly with the committee to advance something more tangible quicker if that serves a purpose too. So with that, I'd like to move to insert the word proposed, uh, similar to the other motions. Uh, develop a, a proposed action plan. Second. Second. All those in favor of the motion? I'm going to I'm going to actually propose an amendment here. Uh -oh. I want to strike the language to charge and coordinate staffing process. Okay. And recommendation for all, and just say action plan for ad hoc committees moving forward. Period. Less is yeah, more. There you Thank go. You. That is my motion. Second. I, I second. need a second. <laughs> uh, second. D discussion on that. I applaud that effort, and uh, it's going to need that kind of help. Yep. Thank you. Good. All those in favor of the mo the amendment. Okay. All those discussion on the main motion as amended. Okay. All those in favor of the main motion as amended. All right. Does that mean I'm sent back to non-action? No, not at all. That was that was a very serious action. <laughs> all right. Uh, action, uh, item number eight: non-action items. There are none. Item number nine: standing and special committee reports and special committee reports and liaison reports. I will start with Councillor Clucci. Uh, quickly, the, the committees have gotten underway, so th that's exciting for me. The Community Center Committee uh, is working hard to finish their report. Uh, the, each of the subcommittees <coughs> have submitted drafts to the, um, I believe by now anyways, the, the group that's going to be editing the final document. So we hope to receive that in, in the coming week or so. Um, and then uh, a week or two following that, we should receive the report from the consultants. So. Uh, I, I think there's been a, just a ton of really good work done by the group of that committee, so I'm really looking forward to reading what they, what they come up with. Councilor Hayes. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Finance Committee has a meeting next week uh, on 128 at 530, and actually many of the items that we have talked off and on about this evening um, it's going to be a packed agenda. We are going to review the TIF policy that we had talked about. Um, there were some amendments that the prior Finance Committee had made that's been processed. We're going to look at the 1231 financial statements. We're going to talk about the status of some of the reserve accounts that we have, trying to better understand what things may be in front of us as we enter budget season. Um, we will review the budget goals that the Joint Finance Committee had agreed upon and share those. Um, and I can't even read because I can't see. And then we will start work on trying to figure out, as we just did in the orders, trying to figure out how we're going to start working on the multi-year financial plan. Councilor Gleistein. Uh, yes, so um, Senior Advisory <coughs> Committee met this week. Um, it's, uh, there's a Valentine's Day dinner and a show. Um, that's at Wentworth Cafeteria on February 12th. Um, from 6 to 8, it's a $15 fee for residents. Um, call Community Services if you want to get a ticket. Um, the deadline is coming up to get the ticket, um, but I would say even if you go past deadline, at least call and see if you could still attend. It's Monday, February 3rd. Um, they also uh, uh, looked at several other things that they have um, in the works. They've had a person out on maternity leave. Um, but they will have uh, brochures ready for summer, brochure, et cetera. Um, they, if anyone is interested at in their next meeting, I believe it is, that they're going to um, review their age-friendly Scarborough survey. Um, that was uh, done by AARP, um, and the, the funds were paid for by AARP, but the town uh, customized a little bit. Um, and we got an update on the community center from uh, a member, Denise, who's a member of both committees, and from um, Todd. Uh, rules and policies. Um, we looked at these um, smoking quote unquote policy. That's what it's beat on the beaches. It's what's listed on the website, but it's not actually a policy. It's a resolution. Um, we looked at it in relationship to are we have we kept up with state law? We decided to kick that over to ordinance. So they're going to take a look at it. Um, and uh, mostly we just said um, we're not quite sure where we are in terms of wh what we might look at next, but we knew this action was coming up to look at the the, uh, the charter process only. <laughs> and uh, so that's what we'll, our next meeting will be about. Thank you. Councillor Katarina? Uh, yes. 
And of course, I left my notes home on meetings I've been at, but from the top of my head, historic preservation, working on um, making sure we've got the list updated of properties. I know we've been working with Jay Chase on that. I'm chasing down um, an Eagle Scout and a project that was done. And I'll, I'll talk to Tom, I'll talk to you about that, you know, to see about um, Recognition. recognition for this person. Uh, and then the other meeting I went to was this morning. It's the first time I've attended sustainability. And they were very, they're, they're, just to be honest with you, they're frustrated because they were talking about, oh, they want to make all these energy related changes to the marijuana ordinance. And I'm like, uh, our second reading's tonight. So hopefully I can help them be more up to date on what's going on in the conjunction with ordinance and those types of things. So, I, yeah. Councilor Johnson? I haven't attended any committee, so I don't have a, any update other than tomorrow is our ordinance. 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 Yeah, thank you. But on a side note, if I may, working with community services, we are launching the first active senior games Whoa. of pickleball. Oh, oh wow. On February 4th <coughs> at the middle school. Is your mic on? Tuesday and Thursday. Nice. Councilor Hamill? Uh, not much to report on committees. Uh, uh, we had uh, Coastal Waters and Shellfish was canceled last week because of snow and folks being stuck out on boats. But, <laughs> but um, there was a letter that was, uh, that, you know, Tody received. Uh, that was submitted by Coastal Waters and Harbor Advisory that provided feedback uh, mm -hmm. from a recent committee meeting on the proposed herd park improvements. So, you know, they, they, they're they primarily concerned about any reduction in parking spaces. Otherwise, they were generally open to the prospect of improvements. But it was a well, you know, well-developed position and a well-written letter and, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to circulate that to the council and uh, we'll make sure that that gets to to, uh, to Todd and to Tom. Great. Uh, I'll use my time just to reiterate on February 12th, that is a, the off Wednesday, so that's the second Wednesday, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. We have a joint workshop with the BOE. It is currently located at the Scarborough Middle School. We are trying to get a better location. It is a three-hour workshop. It's going to have uh, the agenda items are to agree upon an established set of facts around enrollment and growth to agree upon an established uh, common language around enrollment and growth recognizing enrollment and growth are not the same thing and also in the third hour they will give us an update on the need for eight corners portables as well as um, the town manager myself mr hamill and the chair and the vice chair and the superintendent we had a uh, <coughs> meeting about the turf track situation so we'll also, in the third hour, discuss that and where we are in that process um, and possible timelines for that project. Uh, I kind of buried the lead there, but I think it's important. We're, we're in this unique situation right now where we have competing forces and we're almost on this brink of fighting each other from time to time. And I think it's going to be incredibly important moving forward as we do talk about inc large investments in capital improvement projects. We need to agree about what we're talking about. Um, there's a Harriman study. Not everybody's read it. Not everybody knows what it says. There's, a, there was a, there's an excellent enrollment study that was done internally. Not everybody's read it. Not everybody knows what it said. Councilor Clucci's done his own work. Not everybody reads his work. Not everybody knows what it says. Um, and they're all compelling and they all need to be sorted out and we need to agree on this stuff because if we don't agree on it, then we can't move forward. So I just want to stress to everybody that th this, is, this is a genuine effort to get us all speaking the same language because otherwise, we're, I, I fear that we're going to continue this nature of competing forces. But so this hopefully is a step in the right direction. Can we make sure that everyone gets copies of those things that you yep. just said? Yep. I've read the school one, but yep. the Harriman one. I yes. Think, yeah. I'll put them in the folder. Yeah. And yeah. Not just the town council, the BOE too. Yep. Yes, I, I assume, and I'm assuming Mr. Chase is going to have some stuff for us. Or no, uh, I don't. Yes. Well, I shouldn't have said that. I'm <coughs> I'm pleased to have that conversation. I've not engaged Jay. Uh, it's, it's always been postured as more kind of school enrollment, school facility focused. But uh, if the town can play a role in that and provide materials, uh, 
we're certainly pleased to do what we can. Well, since we're to add to this discussion, on the other side is that we were presented in June of last year, a, we had an informative growth workshop about multi-units. So multi-units is, is often looked as increased enrollment and, and frankly, a lot of members of the BOE would prescribe to that. So if that's the truth, we need to figure that out. So I would, I guess my reference would be, if we look back to last June, when we, if we could update the growth workshop that we had, that slide deck and those numbers, that's important because again, if the BOE is going to reference the beacon as a stress on their enrollment, but the beacon has one child, yeah. and this is not this is not a knock on the BOE. This again, this is we're living in different worlds, so we need to bring those worlds together. Do you think it's it would be possible to have that recorded or a recorded meeting? That's I feel like Councilor Glycine's putting some pressure on the town manager, so we're trying. We're trying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I can't manufacture meeting space. It's uh, we're having a, a challenge to find a, a, a good venue for that meeting. At this point, we're in the cafeteria at the middle school. That's the Who, best I can get. Who's in here? Uh, zoning board is here that night, and Council B is uh, absentee voting. Let's just delay the election. <laughs> I'm hopeful to get better space uh, at the high school. We can't. Uh, we won't be able to broadcast live, but we'll certainly be able to get good quality audio and visual for uh, rebroadcast. Okay. okay. Uh, item number ten: Town Manager's report. Um, given the lateness, I'll just touch a couple of things. I've been uh, very busy just internally doing budget development things, mm -hmm. and at this time of year we're doing performance evaluations, uh, so that's fairly time consuming. Um, a reminder that we will be going live with online payments starting with property oh, tax. Right. Uh, that's on February 3rd. That will be a highlight in the upcoming e-newsletter, and it's uh, publicized on the website as well. And I do want to make folks aware this year will be the first year uh, of a state-run program. It's the um, main property taxpayers, uh, what's it called? It's an act to return funds to main property taxpayers. Uh, mm -hmm. Apparently there's been a reserve fund that's established with unspent general uh, fund monies. Uh, the state has enjoyed a couple of years of some urine surpluses. And so uh, all of us that currently qualify for a homestead exemption will be getting something uh, in the order of a $102 check. Uh, in Scarborough, I think um, those checks will be cut next week. So uh, to, the extent, to the extent that you have a uh, homestead exemption already, and I suspect all of us do, uh, you're eligible for payment. Uh, so that's a, a new program. We expect that that may uh, generate some questions from the public, so we're yeah. going to do our part to help uh, provide some response. Yeah, we, can we make sure that we put something out about what the homestead is? Because as a realtor, I get questions about that a lot. Most people don't realize you have to apply for it. You have to have been in your home for sure. a year. We do send letters. I know, and I do too, but it's amazing. Sure. It's Perhaps amazing. we can do a quick little uh, yeah, a quick update on, on what it is. E-newsletter. Sure. Yeah. Thank the you. Alert could be part of the e-newsletter. And it has to be your primary residence, because, like, say you live in Proud Snack or Pine Point, and it's not your primary residence, because your primary is Florida, you aren't going to get that check, so. Right. Thank you for that. Is that it, sir? It is. Councilor co comments? Uh, Councilor Hamill. Yes. Um, I know there was a couple, there were a couple of references to the volume and complexity of issues and related work that we're dealing with. And uh, I think uh, the chair referenced uh, the need for us to be aligned and also to be, you know, not let the work beat us up, okay? So I know we're working hard to try to get things aligned and, and getting in some sort of critical path. So, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm a, you know, a, you know, a major source of friction sometimes when that happens, but I, uh, it's a function of, it's not a function of uh, a lack of uh, a desire for us to collaborate. It's just the, the world that we're living in. I mean, it's a really, if you look at the complexity and the nature of the issues that we're dealing with, it's a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, at one time with a lot of complexity. So related to that, I wanted to thank uh, um, Councillor Clucci for his out of the box ideas around <laughs> around school uh, enrollments and uh, you know the troubles that the folks in Gorham are having. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that was really, really out of the box thinking. Now, some people may call it crazy. But this, is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of stuff. These are the kinds of solutions and questions and discussions we need to start having in terms of reframing solutions. You know, after the work we're doing on uh, establishing, you know, some common ground, a common set of facts. So, you know, I, you know, keep up the good work. That stuff is, uh, you know, even on my most creative day, I could never come up with an idea like that. So thank you. <laughs> Councilor Johnson? I think I'd call it Jack in the Box. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a long night, I just want to make sure I probably should have said this in the, in, the, in the updates, but I attended the community conversation last week. Now, nobody's done that yet. I strongly suggest you do it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I plan on going to other ones. It was a very unique experience seeing Quite a diverse group, not not the normal folks that I hang and chat with, but it was very interesting to see all the same concerns uh, across the board. So again, it was it was a very rich experience. Uh, I'm glad I went. Uh, Betsy twisted my arm to go, and I went. And I thanked her afterward. That's all I. Councilor Katarina. Believe it or not. My watch just said it's almost time for bed, so I'm going to leave it at that. You I've said all of wow. it. <laughs> Councilor Gleinstein? Uh, yeah, I just have a couple of follow-up on um, a couple of things. Um, uh, I had some questions and um, comments around the actual WEX credit enhancement agreement. Um, I meant to bring them up when we were talking about one, but I didn't. Um, so I'll be sending those out to... Um, Tom and Council, so I'm just giving people a heads up. Um, and then the, uh, the the planning board, or um, you know, when the sustainability committee talking about the marijuana, um, you know, that what I, I've tried to allude to that with the planning board had a lot of interest in marijuana performance standards being in 405, not not where we've put them because they wanted to look at it at standardized name or something like that so I didn't propose that I know that they're interested in that but that's something that we might consider in the future going forward um, uh, it was too big of a change to propose to the last minute on the ordinances but um, there's definitely some energy around that councillor Hayes yeah I guess quickly I'll kind of pile on um, Ken's what Ken talked about uh, we I also went to the community connection along with Betsy and Ken that was a really great job and just a quick synopsis they they had us do two exercises. One was to write down what our common values were, and it was really interesting that there are common value streams that resonated across a really diverse group. That's one. Two, the other piece that came up, they really had us, each table had to put themselves in where they were on sort of the spending continuum, either stop spending or spend more. And surprisingly, it was, everybody was sort of in the middle of the road. Yeah. It, it was, and it, what they really stressed and it came out, and I'm going to show my age, but but they use the words a lot around wants versus, I mean, needs versus wants. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds me of sort of that Rolling Stones song. This is where it's going to date myself. But, you know, the, the <laughs> lyrics about you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you find you get what you need. But that really was the theme. They don't okay. mind investing in the needs of the town. That's the right thing to do. They do question about how we get there sometimes and how we do it, and they want to be more engaged in that process. I just thought that was sort of resonated among the whole group, so. Okay. Councilor Kluge. Okay. Uh, um, so kind of along the theme uh, tonight with bringing employers to town, I <clears throat> um, updated, I'm, I'm a kind of a data junkie, maybe crazy, but uh, uh, American Community Survey uh, polls residents of different towns and updates different demographic information. And I thought it was interesting to note for Scarborough, um, our senior population increased 32% this decade, uh, wow. which is uh, substantial. Our, our, our median age went up uh, from uh, 44 in 2010 to 47 in 2018. Uh, the percent of the population under five decreased 25%. So, uh, just as we're thinking about things, I, I think we're very appealing to a senior population right now and maybe not hitting the mark with 
people that are, are working or have families. And uh, that's just something to, to kind of keep in the back of our head as, as work comes down the pike. So that's all I have. Okay, I have no comments. So move motion to adjourn. All those in favor?